can they can tell that you're a little annoyed. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 like I you get a little hint. <laughs> yeah, like I, I can't always have that happy thing. Sometimes I get a little annoyed, and yeah. and I'll be yeah. honest with you, like the, the this week has been tough. Okay. This week has been tough keeping my humor with like Gaza. Mm. That's mess. That's messing me up. Like when mm. I. You know, for me, when adults do dumb stuff and adults are going back and forth and fighting, it doesn't get to me as much. It's political right. stuff. I'm not. Right. I mean, even when adults die, right? Like mur I'm like with war and all that stuff. That right. bothers me too. Right. But when you watch like snipers shooting kids, and like I was, I really try to pay attention to this stuff. I think the kids are really trying to send us a message from over yes. there. Yes, you know, they of course. Are. You know, the other side says, oh, it's just Hamas. Hamas is getting them to do that. That's not the point. Doesn't matter if Hamas has anything to do with it. Exactly. When you have kids running into sniper fire and they're watching their friends fall and they're falling. And Family it's members. Right. And then you and then I, I posted a um, I posted the uh, they had the video of the sniper camera and they're like shooting the kids and they're laughing and they're like joking, you know, who to target. They showed right. their Facebook pages where they're shooting, they're laughing. Right. And I guess so. So for me, like I said, when it when it's adults on adults, mm -hmm. it's bad, right? When yeah. when you see adults taking on military, you call them terrorists or whatever, freedom fight, I don't know. But mm -hmm. when you see kids with rocks and slingshots and grown men with snipers, snipers, right. it's right. hard to keep that smile. It's hard to keep it. So yeah. how, how did you it's do hard. it this week? It's brother? hard to keep the smile, brother. It's, I'm telling you right now, it's hard to keep happiness inside of you when you see so much terror, hate, lack of human care for life, yeah. and just lack of compassion. You know what I mean? This is something that's really core to who we are. Like we, I think deep down inside, we are really compassionate people, but we have been so broken psychologically that we don't understand how to let that compassion show. You know, we don't understand how to let that come out of us in a way that, you know, we can relate or not just relate, but be empathetic to the suffering of these people from other nations, you know, but they're really our family, but they're people of other lands, I should say. And we have been so broken in this American society with yeah. so many different things because there's so many different things that has a play into what's going on right now and they're trying to break us and trying to take our, our our happiness away i guess you could say you know because i've realized that you have to maintain a sense of humor and a sense of i guess joy and laughter in the midst of what we're dealing with right now right because right. happiness laughter is who we are you know we it, it, it's like a part of our drive, you know, it's what drives us to stay sane. You know, I, I guess that's the word you could say, sane, sanity, you know, the words that they like to use. But we are, I think we right now, as the people are drive or running towards insanity, if we're not already insane, but we're running because we're losing our sense of humor. We're losing our ability to communicate with each other and co conversate over just small topics. You know what I mean? The small topics are, are under fire because we're facing pressure and hate and division from the bigger. It's like, tr you know how they said this Reagan stuff, trickle down economics. Yeah. Well, what we are experiencing now is trickle down hate, trickle down division, trickle down um, I don't know what's the words that you could find to call these things that are happening, but it's just nastiness. You know what I mean? The nastiness has trickled down from the top and it has spread to us ordinary people, you know, and it's something that's bad. Like we have to get away from that, but we have to try to find a way to stay joyful and peaceful in these times as well. So that way, you know, we don't fall for the hate games and the tactics of divisiveness, I guess you could say. Yeah. Well, I was laughing this morning, though. I was laughing. You, you oh, yeah, you're laughing this morning? <laughs> yeah, I was laughing this morning. I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't watch the news, and I really don't know always what's going on all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I look at specific stuff, but um, you, you, you sent me a message, and you're like, hey, we should talk about it. Let, let's see, let's see what, what's happening with this. And I didn't know I clicked on it, mm -hmm. and then I started hearing the music. And I tell you, this music, hold on, let me see if I can show this to you. This made, this made me laugh.
Is that her? Is that who's that? I have no idea. Just a pumping. You got a little, little pump in your circumstance. This is what's going on right now. Like this is really what's going on though. Like this is real. This is real. This is 2018. You hit a pump. You hit a pump. Ain't nobody being. No one's being shot right now. Ain't not happening. Ain't nobody dying. Ain't no nobody dying right now, but that that's going on though. This this, this is what we want y'all to see right here, y'all. Look at this. This is what you got to pay attention. Y'all see this? Hey, everybody happy? Y'all see they they pretty? Y'all see they pretty? They pretty? She got a pretty dress on. God <laughs> save the queen. I was like, I was that, that's a, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was in church because that's a church song. Oh, uh, oh, uh, it's a church, and they uh, change the music, and it goes, "God save the queen." And I'm just like, really? Mm-hmm. I, and I and it, and it's not funny, but you look at this stuff and it's like they're totally oblivious, yeah, right. to the evil things that are happening, or they just don't care. Like it's not even, maybe it's not even in, in a psychopath ability to mm-hmm. care. But you know, the thing that I hope people are paying attention to, I hope they're paying attention to the silence of the American government. Yeah. The silence of the Western go- the whole world, even the crazy governments everybody else has, they're showing some outrage. They're showing concern for all right. these kids that are being shot. Right. And all the American politicians, all the mass shooting, gun controlling, you know, as soon as someone yeah. gets shot, you can't you can't shut them up. You can't shut. They, they got tears up. in their eyes. Chris, they're sad. All oh, the kids are being shot and the babies and. But but what we happens? Money. We need money. We need money, right? What happens when it, it, it's a child in Gaza? It's not a child. If it's a child in the West Bank, it's not a child. It's a little. It's a little dog or something, right? So then you don't even hear them. And this is why I don't take them seriously. Mm-hmm. This is why I don't take them when they start telling me. You know, they start talking about Oprah and they start about who they're gonna run next and Joe right. Biden. Right. And we gotta help. You know, Hillary get. You know. And and even I mean on the other side, the Ted Cruz, and we got to yeah. get this person and that. Marco Rubio is he still a factor? Who? Marco Rubio does he still play? <laughs> I, you know I just, I hear this stuff, man, and I I I don't even take them seriously when they start talking about how they want to protect kids and they want to mm-hmm. you know some 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 gun control that's common sense and makes sense. And I'm just like looking at these snipers in Israel sniping these kids, and I'm like. These yeah. people aren't serious. They have no hearts within them. They no. don't give a damn. When money tells them to be quiet, they be mm-hmm. quiet. When mm-hmm. money tells mm-hmm. them to talk, they <clears> talk. When money tells them to put tears in their eyes and act like they're sad about yeah, some they'll kids. They'll cry. They'll cry. They'll cry on a dime, on the spot of a dime. If it's about that money, they crying. Right. If it's right. about that money, if it's about funding, they going to show up. You know, they're, they're, they're I don't want to say they're paid actors, but they're paid actors. You know, they know how they know just how to play the role what they signed up for because they know what they're signing up for. You know, because you don't just go and think that you're going to become a politician in America and go in there and start changing shit around. That's drastic. You know, you're not going to drastically change things around and, you know, do damage in this system of operations in a way that is beneficial to the, all people, you know, because this is what this is. Oh, this is what we're missing, Jim. People are lying. I don't want to say lying, but people are in denial. Mm-hmm. When we talk about how we need to change America and fix the government and do all these things within America, we talk about, or not we, but people are talking from a mentality that is only focused on American people. Okay. But when you break that down, what they're not saying is they're not hoping that all American people get the benefits. They're only talking about the certain American people that they fuck with. Excuse my language, but the certain American people that they mess with, that they're comfortable with. So it's like right. the white privilege types, you know what I mean? They're not talking about changing America for everybody. They're talking about keeping their white privilege intact and changing America so that way more people can benefit from, I guess, the government control or whatever you have in the system of operations we have set up. You know, well, we're not that's even what there, I think. Though. Yeah, yeah I, hear, I hear you, but I don't think we're there. Like, this this is about American privilege. 
This is about West privilege. Okay, like, yeah, right, right. And, right. And even from a, you know, and I, I hate these terms because they get I people arguing, too. fighting, and stuff, but, but for the sake of reality, they, they are terms that people are using today. So for yeah. the sake of like white privilege, yeah, Donald Trump has no interest in that. Right. He, he doesn't give a right. damn about poor whites. He no, doesn't give a damn about middle class. He doesn't care. He don't care about the rich motherfuckers. He don't care he about don't, right, right. He cares about his rich he friends. About he his care bank. about him at that deal at that time, right. and he doesn't care about you know. And but it's the same thing with Obama. And you talk about black privilege. Mm -hmm. He didn't give a damn about poor black people. No, he don't. No. He don't give a damn about middle class. But no. I I talk about black privilege a lot because people okay. don't know that exists. Yeah, it exists. It they, exists. They don't know. That that these words are used as scams, and so I mean, we can talk about West privilege. We can yeah. talk about everybody privilege, has privilege. privilege, right? But Look, the thing that Christianity and, is privilege, privilege there's in America. Christian privilege. Like, you say, you oh, say there's religious privilege, and that means there's Zionist privilege. Yeah. There's yeah. you know, and so and then there's that that point zero one percent privilege, mm. and, that, and that's what we're talking about. Like, if you want to talk about some supreme privilege, who actually rules and runs this world? Mm -hmm. It's that 0.01 percent. Right, they're, right. they're the ones that are calling all the shots. They're the ones that are dropping all the blood. And and I guess what what I think, you know, and the whole reason I'm, I'm on this unity thing, mm -hmm. one, I'm human being. But two, right. the only way you stop the most bloody privilege, this colonizing 0.01 percent privilege that's got everybody in the middle class divided up and fighting each other, that's causing the problems is the middle class actually has to figure out that they're the problem. They're the ones that are feeling this, right? You know, they're the ones that are putting the power in the politicians to put the bullets in the gun, right? The reason why there's no gun control happening right now with the IDF, which is insane because it's not, at, at no other time has it become more clear that this is not a religious thing. Right. You know, because you have Jews in New York marching. Stop. You have Jews all over the world that are marching for the, the stop. You right. have them in Israel and they're and they're being they're being silenced by the Zionists. And then you have IDF soldiers. And I, there was a uh, man, there's a there's a website where IDF soldiers are coming out and they're they're whistleblowing and they're mm -hmm. talking about the dirty things that they were told to do and the third dirty things they were involved in and um, and how. You know, what what is this going to do to people, not only the people being occupied for the last 50 years, but mm -hmm. also the people who are occupying them? Like right. we are normalizing this psychopathic behavior. But, you know, so I, I mean, I don't know. I, I try to laugh through it. And we were we were talking about it like you. Mm -hmm. You have to find a way they find a way to normalize their violence. Right. Very well. And they yeah, got a lot, they got well. millions of people to get behind them to keep voting for them, you know, for their retirement. But yeah. we have to find ways to normalize resistance against their violence. And mm -hmm. I find laughter does that. Yeah, I find that if even looking at the ridiculousness of the contradiction, mm -hmm. I laugh at it. You know, I was looking at a meme this morning where. <laughs> You know, with the IDF sniper and and, you know, you, you, so you talk about gun control. American politicians aren't talking gun control for IDF or Israel design. No, right. American politicians are reloading their guns like that. Th that's really the contradiction. That's right there. They're reloading their guns. They're right. they're helping them to shoot more. And this is why they're quiet, because they already know every day mm -hmm. they're pumping that extra 10 million dollars to get mm -hmm. them get them higher power powered rifles, better scopes. So they can find the littlest kids and and hit them in the legs and the arms and they they they're putting, you know, uh, uh, the, and I don't know if they're using hollow points or what they're using. At this point, I don't even think it even matters. It, it but, doesn't, it doesn't they're using all the artillery that they can get their hands on? Really, any artillery that they find that they need to use to get new. See, it's kind of strategic as well. See, we're we're stuck on the groundwork of it all. But right. behind the scenes, it's very strategic in what they're doing. You know, they have it to where they control the media. So they control the message that we hear and the message that we more or less when when we see it, the visual aspect of it plays into our minds in a way that, you know. Sadness comes about, confusion comes about, and we are already miseducated in this country as far as what the military is doing and what 
other countries are suffering from. We're miseducated as a people in mass. Now, behind the scenes, they have strategic operations set in place 10 years down the line. You know, we're so stuck on right now and they're so stuck on 10 years down the line that we don't seem to grasp. OK, we don't seem to want or I don't know if we want to grasp it or not, but we should grasp the totality of what's happening. And the Palestine Israel clash shows us the history. OK, we have to look at history yeah. outside of American indoctrination. OK, we can't think that America is the country that helps everybody because <laughs> we have philanthropists. Mm. Everywhere in the world. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got a funny one? No, no, I'm just I'm just sitting here. It, it sounds funny anymore. You when you say it out loud, you said it out loud. You said uh, America philanthropist that we're, yeah. we're the good guys. Like this. this is some shit I studied, man. They got these people who are the point zero the point zero one percent, they call themselves philanthropists to disguise it's a disguise, okay? It's a disguise for their worldwide endeavors. You know what I mean? They're taking on these endeavors worldwide. And we have no idea what they're really doing, but on paper, they put it out there that they're helping the world. So now when it comes to dudes like, I don't know if people know Ted Turner, but I've been doing a lot of looking up on Ted Turner because the media goes through Ted Turner. You know what I'm saying? And it is crucial to know that we have to find out who this guy is associated with, you know, so that way we can really break down what we're being fed what we're being misled with and why they seem to want us to follow along with these certain narratives, you know, that says we have to practice nationalism before anything. You have to be American and view things from the eyes of a good American or else you're just a bad person. So it's kind of fucked up. I made a post earlier this week, but it makes perfect sense. In order to be a good human being, you honestly have to be a bad American. You know what I mean? And it, 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 it makes no sense, but it makes perfect sense because we're human beings. We should care about every human being. There should not be a time where we're saying, oh, we're, we're better human beings than the Israelis or we're better human beings than the Russians or we're better human beings than the Chinese. No, they're indoctrinated as well in a different kind of way. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's strategic everywhere around the world that all of our information is so scrambled, I guess you could say. But what we need to do as people, as individuals, is learn that we can inform ourselves outside of the mainstream narratives, the mainstream rhetoric. We can create our own narratives. We can create our own rhetoric, which is more positive, more loving, more caring, more compassionate. You know, yeah. we're being... <clears throat> told we're being rude this they're really telling us we have to hate one another to get ahead you have to hate donald trump to get ahead you have to hate the republican voters to get ahead you have to hate the liberals to get ahead you have to hate the the, the, the left you have to hate this person we have to hate somebody to get the solutions that we want which is what they're saying but have that to, could have be to hate which i'm saying we have to hate to love you hey, got to hate gotta, something to love it. You got to hate stuff to. You got to hate something to love something, and it's right. it's wrong. We just have to love to love. You know what I mean? And that's what I realized. Like that's why laughter. The laughter for me, is because I love life. I love existence. You know what I mean? And without laughter, I realized that I wouldn't be sane right now because it's a lot of stuff that is going on that drives me crazy. You know, I'm. I know I wake up sometimes, and I'm ready to snap. Snap on just the world, not just the world, but just like snap as far as my inner frustrations mm. about what's going on. And I don't want to say being powerless because I got a lot of power to do the things that I do, but being in a country where so many other people feel powerless. You know what I mean? When so many other people feel as though they have to be at the mercies of governments, of organizations, of these institutions of division and it's so frustrating you know what i mean it's like my family my 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 friends my 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 facebook family you know what i mean and it's like what are they trying to do to us you know we 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 we're, we're so focused on the politics 
and we're so focused on what they are telling us to focus on that we're not focusing on each other. You know, we're not focusing on healing one another with right. love and proper information, I guess you could say. Right. Right. Well, well you know, we don't, don't it's gonna sound dark. dark. We don't we care don't about that. Like, you know, outside of everything else, just just keeping it real and just being honest with it. We don't care about each other. Mm -hmm. we, we, I think I think we have a hard pill to swallow. We care more about ourselves yeah. than we do about the next door neighbor. We care more about ourselves, our generation, than we do our kids' generation. Mm -hmm. We care more about mm -hmm. Americans than we do anybody else. We, you know, and and they they lock us into I, sometimes I don't think about what are they trying to do to us. Mm -hmm. And I just try to swallow the pill of what have they already done to us? Oh what, man. What, uh, have, uh. what have they already taken yeah. from our humanity? Right. And and this is why, um, like I I I love that you're broadcasting this morning with a mirror behind you. I can see the back of your head. I see I know, man. I'm trying to get that it. mirror out of here. I, I, I'm no, to, I love it. I was supposed I love to put it. a blanket up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you you're putting stuff in my head. I'm thinking through it. I mean, that's but that's where our problem is. And I think the times that I can laugh my way through this, it is really because of like my Facebook family yeah. and, and YouTube yeah. and these Facebook websites. Family, where, I mean, they they keep us they keep us sane. Like yeah. that's really for, for me where it comes from. Because they'll come up with something funny. You know, you gotta you gotta laugh. So like, like Brother Salvador, you're talking about zombies. Like you you have to <laughs> you have to laugh and stuff because it is actually really ridiculously funny. I think when you focus on the mirror and you focus on we all do dirt. All of our mm -hmm. lifestyles are based on dirt, blood, money, and yeah. horrible things. You can't live in the West and not have an attachment to the evilest, darkest things that are happening to them. And, and, and I think when you accept that, it's easier because mm -hmm. you can focus on your own mirror and stop mm -hmm. looking at everybody else. Stop looking mm -hmm. at you know the, the, the left or the right. Stop looking mm -hmm. at the Christian. Muslim or the atheist. Stop looking at the man or the woman. Stop looking at you know what this class or that class. You realize that you're doing dirt right. every single day, and our convenient lifestyles are propped up on that dirt. Yes, sir. and and that's when, and so you know what have they already done to us? And the other thing you were saying that that I think about too is is thinking about uh, the zombies. Right. What Brother Salvador just said, thinking about the zombies, we live in a nation. It's not just the politicians that are quiet, you know, mm. about all these kids that are being shot all over the world. And then just to make sure everybody's clear, we're not talking about Americans. Nope. <laughs> I, my heart is there when Americans get shot. But my heart, I spend more of my time on people around the world who are being shot because right. I, I, I see too much of a contradiction and selective choice in who's more human. So. And so I don't want anyone to be confused and think that we're, you know, we're talking, talking about gun control and NRA. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking human control. I human. think that's where we are. We're, we're talking human 1% control. Mm -hmm. And the only way we control them is for people to really stop being zombies, to right. stop being clones of the 0.01%, to stop being, you know, the many hoarders and just, you know, focusing on the Donald Trumps of the world. I'm going to say it again in case nobody's heard me say it before. Donald Trump is the perfect president for America. Yeah, man, come he on. Is the perfect again. because he, he Donald Trump is the perfect president, the perfect leader. He perfect, man. embodies the American spirit and soul today. The modern American, not the, the modern old American. Americans, not the old poor ones, right. but the modern Today's greedy, American. hoarding Americans. Mm -hmm. He is the perfect because you know what he's doing, Chris? He's doing what I'm doing. I'm looking at the back of your head in this mirror and he's allowing Americans to see what the back of their heads look like. He's really letting people yep. know. Give them a know, bird's eye view. <laughs> hey, a, a bird's eye view of what your head looks like. Like, you know, you don't have billions of dollars in greed and you're not doing trade deals and hurting mm -hmm. and, 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 and evicting immigrants. Right. But but how many immigrants are you letting in your house? How many immigrants are you letting across the border into your yard? Come on, see. How many? How many? See, see, do you see what I'm, you see where I'm going with that? Do you see where I'm going with that? You know, what kind of retirement? What type of retirement are you saving for? Are you just looking out for your what kids? What immigrants you saved? 
Donald Trump can bring it. This is what's, listen, I'm on the ground. Gee, you said it. I'm on the ground. These people are talking about, oh, we're against this and we're against that and we're against all this. But then I'm like, wait a minute. Where are the actions behind what you, what immigrants did you bring in? What immigrants did you reach out to? What people in the inner cities did you go and try to help out? None. Donald Trump's not an activist. None. Let's get him. He's not an activist. Now, meanwhile, we aren't activists, or I'm not saying we, because I don't fit that. <laughs> I've been doing this dumb stuff since I was in my 20s. But, you know, so, so Donald Trump's not helping poor people. Are you? You feel me? It's Donald Trump fault. It's Donald Trump fault. It's, we just got to get him out. I mean, gee, that is so true, brother. And this is what it is. Like, this is what I realized. When Donald Trump won or when Donald Trump was about to win, because, you know, everybody thought Hillary Clinton was going to win and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, these people got these people are going to get what they deserve. You know what I mean? I felt it. You know, I felt it and I kind of knew it. And it was kind of weird because, like, I was watching and, you know, entertaining it. And as it was happening, I was laughing. You yeah. know what I mean? I was laughing. as I'm like, this is exactly what the country deserves. It is because the hypocrisy, the the the, the contradictions, the, the hate, okay, the division that got ramped up ahead of or after, I guess we could say because it was like Bernie Sanders thing, it was like more or less issues oriented or whatever, but it was like a little bit of love, I could say. It was a little bit of love that people had and they were able to show that and try to come together, I guess. But it was for po- it was political purpose, you know. What I mean, it was it wasn't human Ooh. purpose. Did you say you political know? love? It was real shit. It was political love. It wasn't mm. humanity. It wasn't humanity love. That's what oh, I realized right. from the Bernie Sanders uh, movement, political revolution, whatever you want to call it. It was all political, okay. And then when I thought when I saw that, that's why I said, "Yo, I'm didn't get into this for politics. I didn't get into this for for division." I didn't get into this to say I hated anybody. I didn't get into this to hate anybody. You know what I mean? So then when I examined it and I said, wait, why is Bernie Sanders telling me to hate somebody? Why is Bernie Sanders telling me to hate an entire group of people just like the Democrats did? Because they, they, it wasn't just the fact that the politics were drowning out the voices of the suffering because that's what's been going on forever. That's the it. politics has always drowned out the voice of the real suffering. And that's we have allowed that to happen because of what you just said. Everybody's crying, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, but they're not doing anything individually to counteract what they claim that Donald Trump is doing. You know, so then I realized like, what is the real truth of what's happening? People want to be American or people want to be human, you know? And I realized that you have to decide. In life, you have to make certain decisions that will change the future of not only your life, but the entire scope of humanity's lives. You know what I mean? Because you making some, just smiling, being happy, it might make somebody else change their ways or, or their hateful ways or their negative day. And they might see you smiling, being happy. And they'd be like, damn, why am I so mad and sad and all this? Is like, I need to be happy because this person's happy. You know what I mean? How do they deal with it? How, yeah, do, they how do they deal with it? it? And, and, and I think that's, that is one of the keys is normalizing resistance to the zombies. We are in the zombie. Salvador and took me. He didn't took me there this morning. You, you oh, know, he got you in the zombie. Huh? He got me in the zombie. I'm the Walking Dead. He's got me there. So I'm thinking my analogy is popping in my head. But you know, we have to normalize survival in the zombie apocalypse. We are in the zombie apocalypse. The vast majority of people have political love. It's not real love. It's fake love. Fake they love, demonize man. things like you said, like the Americans. You always say how we always need a demon. The military industrial complex always needs a demon mm-hmm. because it gets people to rally behind stupid ideas. And right. it's the same thing from on the lower level politics. The people deploy this political love and it's and it's and it's always partial and it's always fake love. It's not real love. And it's, yeah. it's based in hate, based in, it's hate. based in hating somebody. And so and so and you, so you think about it. So they get Donald Trump out of office. What's going to happen? Pence will take over. What's going to change? Who would not nothing? a damn thing. All it's going to do is put another notch on their ego belt 
so we can keep screwing up the world so we can yeah. keep killing kids we can keep, keep destroying stuff instead of building things we have a a destructive mental illness psychological mind screw in the west and we got to take we got to get rid of it i think donald trump is the perfect zombie for the zombie apocalypse yeah. to lead all the other zombies because that's yeah. what he's doing whether you like him or you hate him you know whether you love him let me go this way whether you you blindly love him and everything he says, yeah. or you blindly hate him and everything he everything says, said, right. you're one of his zombies in a zombie army. You're one of them. You're, you're one of them. marching. You're you're you you know you. What <laughs> was it? Was it uh? Who was that? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. You want it? You might be going to the left or the right. Choreographed. They choreographed it, man. They choreographed, they choreographed it real good. Oh, you hit the word. It's choreographed. Did y'all they choreographed good this word. one real good. Brother. They choreographed. <laughs> he he's dancing up. Every he's just there, and I don't know that Donald Trump is dancing him, but whoever is dancing, Donald Trump is making yeah, them dance. Dancing him is dancing us. They dance you know, this is dancing everybody. And so every day I wake up and I, what is this? A thriller, right? It's thriller. <laughs> every day I wake up and I just see people doing this, whether they're going every blind, day. blind, hate, and they're just dancing to it. And I'm just, and I laugh at it. I laugh at it. And so I think that's that's where people, I think people are are are, are scared to one speak up about like you know the kids who die and all of this you know the, the the really horrible dark things in the world because i think they're really scared to admit that we are really in big trouble yes and i don't think they want to admit that they know that their retirement and all their consumerism and all this crap that we do mm -hmm. ties into it it ties in all but, that but i think when they see that you're okay with it that 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 you I don't know. You have a deeper belief. You have more of a sustainable, normalizing resistance to it where we can speak the truth and go one minute from almost coming to tears, looking at the kids in sniper scopes to laughing at the ridiculousness of all of it. Yeah. That any of these people actually care about kids and any of the people who support them are informed enough to understand how their support for it doesn't help kids in any way. Yeah. And and I think that's the only thing that draws me to Facebook. It draws me to these platforms because we can link up with people mm -hmm. who actually are starting to normalize resistance in the zombie apocalypse. We got to make a food run, man. We got to go get medicine. We got to yeah. go get some clips. We got to go get some bullets, survive, man. We know we how to survive. survive. We got to we got to find survive. Yo, that's real tough. Look, I was going to leave Facebook way long ago, bro. And then I'm like, I thought about it, and I did it like. I'm already got the people in my life. If I left Facebook, I would have to be like a a social media, real life person. You know what I mean? Like posting, just being out there on the streets, talking shit to people and just posting, you know, taking my posts basically to the streets. And I realized that I could do that, but I can still also tie into the Facebook airways because it connects us nationally. You know what I mean? I could do stuff on a local level, but we need to kind of be connected nationally and uh, internationally. Worldwide. You know, internationally, internationally. Yeah, internationally. It's like one of, one of your videos you can make a video and 400 people see it that facebook will admit to because yeah. they play with the view counts a lot yeah, i right, see a yeah. lot you know but really thousands of thousands people could yeah. see your post right. and and if you you can go get a microphone a megaphone go downtown and start yelling and screaming mm -hmm. first of all most of the zombies can't hear you yeah they can't second of all most of the zombies can't even translate what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> you know, military industrial complex. Yeah, what are right, you right. About? What, what is, this, this guy crazy? Crap. What, what the hell are you talking about? about? The military bad? You know? What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> and so the 12 people who actually know what you're talking mm -hmm. about, they got to, half of them got to go to work. So they don't have, they got to keep so, them moving. Yep. But right. But posting when this is, this is the, the power of social media and the ability to reach out and, and, and put a thought out there in the world. And it come back, it comes back as something else and gets regurgitated, turns into yeah. an analogy. Brother Salvador says zombies, mm -hmm. and man, we have this picture in our head that right. actually makes it right. really make sense. It resonates with us. It resonates with yes. us by the uh, by the connecting of tech. See, technology is bad and good. It's all about how you use it. You know what I mean? If you use it to where the people are like going on and getting the wrong information because they don't know how to get the right information, or they're just wasting their time looking at being miserable, looking at what other people's lives are like and how other people are living. Like I know a lot of my people, friends, they scroll down their phones worried about what other people are doing and this and that. And it's like, when it comes to the, any social media, I can't scroll down, but one minute, 
before I'm just upset, highly upset. You know, so it's like when I go on Facebook, I post, get out the way because I like to see what other people are doing and share the good stuff. Like, you know, the people that are in this community that are trying to bring out a new way of thinking and looking at a lot of different things, but also educating each other. But it's a lot of hate that is trying to overplay what we're attempting to do. You know what I mean? And it's scary because it's like this, what people don't understand, Facebook is kind of like the streets. People hide it way more in the streets. You know, Facebook, people think they could come and say anything they want and they just post and all this. Hate. And it's like, damn, are you really like this on the streets when you're dealing with people? Are you really this hateful? <laughs> and do you really dislike people that much? I'm thinking about it, it's like, do you say this to your coworkers? I bet you don't. Do you say this to your family members? I bet you don't. No. So now, not only is it fake political love that's being shown, but it's just fake representation that's being shown on Facebook. So you can't, don't, what I want people to understand is don't take a lot of the stuff you see for face value on Facebook, because this is not who some of these people are in real no. life. They no, go they, to they Facebook. Don't. Is Facebook is like an escape, I realized, for a lot of people to just come and talk about the things that are pissed off about or whatever the case is. And it's 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 bad because when the truth needs to be heard and spoken, these people and their ideologies are trying to throw dirt on that truth. You know, it's kind of weird to break it down, but in real life, they wouldn't say shit to you in the streets. No, they wouldn't. If I no. say something about some these people. I, I feel like yo, you would never come at me on the streets. <laughs> you wouldn't be crazy enough to come at some. And it's like I'm not saying it because I'm black and tall or anything like that. I'm just saying this from logic. You yeah. wouldn't come at me on the streets about some of the stuff that I say. But on Facebook, Facebook you right. can hide behind a keyboard and do all the hating you want to no. do. And yeah, it's well, okay. they don't, it's acceptable. Yeah. And it's like this they is don't, wrong. They 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 don't, they don't kiss their mama with that mouth. Right, that's you know that what I mean? Thing. Like you ain't kidding. You kiss your mama with that mouth. You, you they, got they kids. You people got kids. Right. They they don't kiss their mama with that comment. They don't kiss their mama with those fingers. Like Real they, talk. that's not Real who talk. they are. You know, they, you you have a lot of little internet, you know, people who can go and stir up drama because it's entertaining, right? Right. It, right. They get a relief. Need a relief. And yelling and screaming, right? They had a bad day at work, and so they go online. They know they can mm. off mm -hmm. by saying, you know, oh, the Palestinians attacked Israel first. You know, it's you know, and they know that it'll tweak you. They know that it'll irk you, and they get a rise out of that. It makes them feel better about something. They pick right. a side. They're on a tribe. They can. It's like it's almost like a video game. Yeah. You know, it's like a small win. Right. It's like a small win. You know, they want to be in a tribe, and they want to. Uh, 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 march and dance and dance with the spears with their tribe on the internet, and they do that, and it makes them feel better, and it makes their, I don't know, life more sustainable in this horrible forced labor environment that we have in our society. Yeah. But in it's not a video game, right? It's not a video game. Right. They're tribalizing, and they're taking something that's unsustainable, and they're trying to make their life sustainable off of causing more problems on social yeah, media. Right. So you can't take any of it seriously. You can't take all you can do is you post the facts and when you see people are trolling because you know they hate themselves yeah, or they hate their life or they're miserable. Mm -hmm. You know my I, I I feel sorry for people like that. I feel sorry for them G. like that's real heart, talk. yeah my heart goes out to them and I and this is why I try not to combat with people on the internet when mm -hmm. they come back with very illogical, heartless, cold messages. Right. You know, when they try to pretend that they know who Christ is, but they talk about how this bloodlust that the IDF have somehow has something to do with Christ or, right. Right. You know, uh, or any sort of they God. Know, they, they know how to connect all the indoctrinated dots. Right, right. I, I, I don't let it get to me. I just, I look at it and I just, I... I feel sorry for them. Like I kind of internally say a prayer for them. I hope that they resolve that hate that's in their heart, yeah. you know, and then you keep stepping and you keep moving. We, we have to make resistance sustainable. I think if we would call this weekend wrap up thing that we do, okay. you know, if we, we call this topic something today, it would probably, you know, say, how do we make resistance sustainable? How do we normalize it? And the other thing you said, I, I'll, ch I'll chime in and say is that, you know, we do need to be in the streets, though. 
Like we mm -hmm. do need to talk to people in the real world. A lot of people yeah. aren't on Facebook. And uh, I guess my point is that on Facebook and YouTube and these different sites, you can reach a wider audience with yeah. truth, truthful things, yeah. but you absolutely still have to be doing have something be. at a local level. You have yeah. to be doing, and I'm not saying in terms of being an activist, mm -hmm. what you yeah. could be no, doing. Not, no. that's, it, what, that's another thing. That's it, a term we need to get rid of kind of because it's like it, the woke thing, like, oh, I'm woke. It got co-opted. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's co-opted by a group of people who want to be part of an in crowd or whatever you have, you know what I mean? And activism has been co-opted because the word is, the word has broad meaning. You know, if you, if you say, you know, if it's weird. It's like progressive. Progressive has broad meaning. You say you want to, you smoke cigarettes, you want to quit cigarettes. You're progressive. That easy. You know what I mean? But, oh shit, nice little bird. The birds is coming out today. I put some food out there for the birds. They out there eating it. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> the dogs is exotic too, yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's crazy because we have to get away from some of these terms that we've come to be familiar with, you know. And it's it's kind of hard because this is the status quo, standardized terms we use for these type of fights. But resistance has been co-opted. You know what I mean? Resistance was co-opted by the Women's March or the Democratic Party because you're in resistance to Trump, and it's like no. We're not in. I'm not in resistance to Trump. I'm in resistance right. to the system in its entirety. You know what I'm saying? So the co-optation of it was we're resisting Trump and his uh, misogynistic ways and all this. This is the real resistance. And they 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 co-opted that. They co-opted the the political part of what we're doing, you know, but yeah. this isn't about political. This isn't about politics. No, there's there's no about, politics in this. Right. That's where we've got sidetracked. We thought this was about politics when this was really about humanity. And humanity is the scope of people worldwide, not just in America. So when you're talking about, oh, we got to boost American politics, we have, it's like this is what people say, we have a chance to fix American politics. American politics can be, what do you mean? It's possible. And the same people will go to church on Sunday and pray to different gods. Catholic, the Christian, they'll divide themselves up with religion. The same people will go divide themselves up with privilege. Yep. The same people will go divide themselves up. Oh, do you do you like killing babies or do you not like killing babies? Oh, well, you support America, so you must like the American military killing babies. But do you, wait, you don't? So I, I, this is where I get stuck at. The one easy way to figure out where people stand is to talk about war. You know what I mean? Talk about war and the history of it. Because we know the history of war has been led by, I don't want to say American actors because they're not even American, which people think they are. But these colonial powers that have descended down or have, they, they have passed it down the descendant of their psychological understanding. You know, the psychology about these modern times is a real big issue. People don't understand how they think. People don't understand how they were trained to think in the way that they do now. People won't even people won't even look behind beyond American education to see how the American education system was brought about to train how we think today. So it's like we have to break down ourselves individually in examining how we were or how we got to the point where we got today as far as thinking, understanding, and I guess relating to each other. Because we know we want to be, for, for me, it's about humanity and it's about relating to other people, different people. And the way we do that is find that common ground that we all have. See, this is crazy. We all have common ground, every single last one of us. And it's way, the common ground that we have is so much more than what we're being fed and said that divides us. You know, because it's like when we get thrown in the political arena, we're all divided. We're like, oh, I, I don't like this person because of this. I don't like that person because of that and that. But when we talk about just from a humanitarian standpoint or from a humanity, human being standpoint, we have so much in common. You know what I mean? So, we have everything in common and it's crazy. We don't talk about it because we think it's all political. And it's like, that's where I get sad more or less than anything else because I realized that we're fighting over politics, but we're not talking about just our human, our nature 
as just humans, you know, because we're we are vulnerable to things that we're raised around. You know, we're vulnerable to these things in a way that we may not really understand, like how we view money today. People view money as like it's God or it's you oh, can't. Works. It's like you can't live without money. That's just this America. If you live in here in the world or whatever, wherever you live, you can't live without money. This is what people truly think. Oh, so they, like they worship it yeah. and they worship it because that's how they we've been trained to worship money. So yeah. we if we if we were to examine our own history without American uh, beliefs and civilized American minds or what we think is, we would see that there were times where people lived without money. You know what I mean? Without the illusion that money was needed to rule and reign supreme. Maybe this modern era, we got ahead of ourselves and where money is everywhere and it controls everything we do, but we're smart enough to get away from money again. See, that's the thing. We are very, we are, we are smarter than what they're telling us we are. You know, well, we're, we're smarter, but we're weak. And this is the, the scary truth of it is that people worship money. They don't worship a God. I don't, I've gotten past that. People, okay. they worship money when mm -hmm. they're, when, when it's time to pay their bills and they need something to save them, mm -hmm. they go to the wallet. They they go the like, God, they, that's, that's what they worship. They're not, they're like, Lord, please, Jesus. <laughs> they don't do that. No, no, they do. They you know what? Online. God, God got, it's God real. He got this. Oh. I ain't paying that bill today, but God yeah. want to make sure my bills. God, yeah, yeah. God is a second hand God because most people they worship the capital M. They worship the money, and yeah. that's the the money is their savior. Right. And so they they but they can't they can't envision a life without it, and and because they're weak, right? It, it, we all are. We, we all, all are to a degree, are. right? Because we're, we're based. Right. We're 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 connected to this infrastructure in a way it provides our water, it provides our food, it provides, you know, some sort of tribalistic need that people have. And mm -hmm. so we 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 have to become strong again. Yeah. We have to we have to look back and 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 learn, relearn why the people who came before us were so strong. Yeah. We have to think about how did we become so weak? How do we become such dependents of the evilest people mm -hmm. on this planet? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's what you, you know, a lot of it has to do with what you said in terms of indoctrination in schools. We are indoctrinated to be weak. We're indoctrinated to be helpless. Yeah. Because if you can if you can be that helpless bird, you know, that fell out the nest, then you always need a big government to hold you and coddle you and care for you. And I think this is why they outlaw sustainability. They literally make it illegal for you to take care of yourself because, right. you know, people who need big governments can get a bigger government and you'll mm -hmm. keep voting for bigger and bigger and bigger yeah, governments, yeah. you know? And, and so I, I honestly, I envision a world where we have no government. Mm -hmm. I envision a world where we have no money. I don't, I know that we don't need those things. Yeah. We don't like you could literally empty every bank account tomorrow. Yeah, literally. You, could, you you could take all the money in the world tomorrow, mm -hmm. and the next day will will still come, and the it, next it, day it, will still it, come. Right, right. And the guy, the guy who works at the water company, he's still going to go fix the water pipes. The water's going to still run. The exactly. guys who work at the electric plant, they're going still going to go fix that. Right, right. You know, the the lady who works in the grocery store, she's still going to go to work. Why? Mm -hmm. Because that's what we do. Yeah, right. We exactly. do these things to survive, and we if we know that we're surviving as a collective. Mm -hmm. Everybody will still do what they do, and that's just that's just that's just real. That's real it is, but that's but real. they convince you that the world will fall apart if if yeah. we don't keep we don't being do these things. right right if we don't keep being many Donald Trumps. And I, I don't and I don't mean to pick on Donnie. I'm not picking on Donnie today. That's not what I'm doing. Right, I'm just right. saying that you know it, it's it is a perfect rubber because Obama was perfect too. Obama was perfect too. He was his little greedy little bastard like everybody else. Perfect. He, he just perfect he candidate. Just, he just he had more filters. That yeah. was the only difference. Yeah, he right. was polished. He was way more polished. He was in bed with the military industrial complex. He was, oh, he was in awesome. bed with the big banks. He was in bed with big pharma. He was in bed with everybody. He was in bed with, 
They oh yeah, oh they all got the STD, brother. They all got that same greedy, greedy TD. They all got it. They all been in the same bed. They all done did the nasty. Yo, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like this. Look, yeah. I, I don't like doing the Obama thing, you know, because everybody's hated, but you gotta get everybody. Look up the history of Obama. Look up the history of his parents that they didn't tell us, you know, because they stop at this is where they stop at. Oh, Obama's mother and Obama's father. His father was Kenyan and he's black and he got black family and this and that. You should know that part about Obama, but don't look up the history of the connection between Obama's family members and the deeper connection to what this country is. It's kind of weird because Bill Clinton is kind of connected to the history of the beginning of this country as well. And mm. it's funny that I mean, look at look, you got basically when you research the things, you have to do it unbiased. So now you're not like, oh, well, I, I hate Obama. I hate. No, you're just you love information. You know, that's what I realized for me is like, I don't hate Donald Trump. I don't hate Hillary Clinton. I don't have time to hate these people. No, do I dislike these people. I very much dislike them. Yes. But I dislike a lot of people. But I still love just the fact that we all exist. You know what I mean? But yeah. I love information. Well, you, well, well, we, you can love a person because mm -hmm. they're a person. Yeah. And then you can hate what they do. Oh, yeah. That's like, what. So, yeah, like, that's, that's really what it comes down to. I mean, I, I, I swing at Obama and, and now I'm swinging at Trump because he's okay. finally shown his cards. And, okay. and this whole let's give him a chance thing. It should be obvious now that he's in bed with everybody that he yeah, that was obvious. Yeah. People want to so, It's cute. <laughs> right. Right. I, you know, you, you so you can still love people. For who mm -hmm. they are, because people can always change. Donald Trump could change tomorrow. Obama exactly. could change tomorrow. Exactly. You know, they could they could turn around and actually start doing things for the nine point zero one percent. It's highly unlikely, but it certainly is more plausible if people stop acting like them. If people mm -hmm. stop mm -hmm. becoming selectively greedy and selectively yes. hoarding, then you know that that's. I think that's how we we start to make progress in that direction, but. Um, uh, I, I think we get the government we deserve and I think we got the government we deserve. And if people continue to push their, their hate doctrines, mm -hmm. because I don't just worship money, they worship hate, right? Yeah, and if hate. people continue mm -hmm. to, to push their well-meaning hate doctrines. The next president will be worse and the next one will be worse. worse and, and worse. The next one will be worse. Right. Right. And that's what's scary because like you said, people are hoarders and it's like, I think, you know what it is? we're hoarding hate you know that's kind of weird like we've been hoarding hate for so long and or people people have been hoarding hate for so long they never had a way to unleash it so when donald trump came about guess what this was the easiest way e oh it's Don donald trump oh my god i can let all this hate out i can yeah. let all this i can Ooh. give all this hate back Ooh. i can give all this, and now we're in the host we're in the atmosphere of hate because people were hoarding that hate for so long and didn't know how to let go of it. Didn't right. cause really the hate was towards the government. The hate was towards the government institutions that haven't been doing their part for the people. That's what right. the people really hated. But now they just needed somebody to blame. And right. you know, the conservatives were blaming Obama like this and that, you know, the whole time, whatever. But we've always been divided on who we're blaming. You know, we haven't been blaming the institutions. We only been blaming the actors, you know, right. and, or this is for the mainstream. I'm not generalizing like everybody. A lot of people have been fighting these fights for years. You know, a lot of people have been on the ground and researching information for years. Right. But the majority, the mainstream, we've been told to hate the actors. So we've been hoarding hate for a lot of these things that have been happening. Because the thing about 9-11, people still don't know what happened on 9-11. And I know damn well after the whole Bush thing and whatever happened with that, people are still confused about 9-11. But yeah. the mainstream, yeah, they don't care because the mainstream, they know it's easier to follow along. It's easier to fall in line than it is to question what's going on. You know, so now the mainstream, it's easier to hate Donald Trump than to do your own research and individually seek out the truth. And that's kind of scary to me. Right. Well, you know what? I, I think uh, I try to look at the, the, the comments in the room. I forgot who just okay, let's, said somebody, let's do some let's comments. Paul, Brother Paul just said, he said, call out evil where you see it. And I appreciate that comment, Paul. And this is the, and this is what I want to relate to people and connect it that, you know, you still if you still hear politics, you're not hearing. You know, 
We're talking love and hate, good mm-hmm. and evil. Wherever mm-hmm. hate appears, you go after it. It doesn't yeah. matter what face is behind. Doesn't matter what color the talking head is, what religion, wherever they are, what nation it is, what you think you're supposed If it's hate, you attack it. You know, mm-hmm. you get rid of it. You wipe it out. The only way you end up having leaders that are decent is you force them to stay decent. When they say indecent things, mm-hmm. you, you, you call them out. Right, you know, call them out. You know, it's like ra- raising a politician is like raising a child. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, why does Donald Trump say the things that he does? It's because we let him. Yeah. You know, why did Obama do the things that he did? Because we let him. Right. You know, why did Bush? And there's, at, at a certain point in time, we have to go back to being adults, take the politics out of everything and say, yeah. this is just about integrity. It's just it's about, integrity. you know, being a human being, having that human patriotism. Right. Like I used to be I used to say, I guess, you know, you go back maybe a year ago, I would say things like I'm a patriot. My background is libertarianism and, okay. and I'm a patriot you know, to America. And I am still a patriot to America, okay. but I'm a patriot to my state too. Mm-hmm. I'm a patriot to my local community. Mm-hmm. I'm a patriot to my continent, but overall by priority, I am a patriot to human beings. Right. And it's not about politics when kids are being shot by high powered rifles. It's not, there's no, there's no politics in that. And it's not about a gun either. Right. You know, it's about, being in touch with what we are mm-hmm. and listening to the kids crying out like I, we like we were talking about a little earlier what i see when i look at gaza at, at palestine is i see kids who are crying out in the dark to the adults in their world that bad men are hurting us i don't hear Hamas. I don't hear terrorism because even the Hamas, the, the leadership of Hamas is corrupt, just like the leadership of Israel is corrupt, like mm-hmm. the leadership of America is corrupt. I hear kids who are saying, listen, we're in a bad spot. We yeah. need help. Yeah. And, and I see kids who at, at, at ages we were playing with iPods and Walkmans and mm-hmm. Nintendo, kids who just should be running around enjoying life and, and learning how awesome this world is that the adults yeah. created for us. Yeah. I see kids who are, who are, they got, they got monsters under their bed at nighttime. Like if you're a parent, you know, you hear that cry in the middle of the night when your, your, your child cries out, you know, they're monsters, they're monsters. Mm-hmm. You know, there aren't monsters, but what do you do? You jump out the bed and you go help them. Right. right? Because right. you hear that cry of a child. And, and that's what I see in them. I see that these are kids who are just saying, you know what? It's better to die than live like this. Right. It's better to it's better to walk into sniper fire than to live like this. Exactly. They they they'll rather put their lives on the line than keep suffering the way. And you know what? You know what it does. See, this is why we must know history, G. This is why we can't never forget history, and we can't look at history from the eyes of American as they taught us in education. No, you can't. The way that these kids are suffering, this happened before. Think about it. This has happened before multiple times. And this has happened at the hands of American government and its allies multiple times throughout history. And this has never stopped happening throughout history because for the sake of their strategy, we are miseducated on purpose, I guess you could say. We are miseducated to, to, to be overly American before anything else. And what that does is is place us in, you know how people are denying the things that are happening in the American government, like, oh, well, the corruption with uh, election integrity, there's no election integrity, corruption within the election system. People ignore that. They don't care about that anymore. We are trained to not care about the things that happen overseas anymore. Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, Pac, we don't care about none of these things anymore. And it's like, this has to do with what's happening today. This, okay. what happened in Iraq, what happened in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, these things are connected to what's happening today. And we've denied them. As an, I, I, I'm not saying we, but the majority have denied these things were the fault of American government. So therefore, when Israel is raining down on Palestine, the American government can open an embassy in Jerusalem that should be Palestine, but 
the American people don't care because the American people think Israel is a holy land from God. You know what I mean? They don't even understand that Israel was created by something, you know, Palestine. All, I mean, when I look at the, the areas and the terms, I go back to the history, you know, and the history says, you know, the Bible says Israel and this and that, but you have to connect it deeper. Why was the Bible talking about things in the way that it was trying to convince us, you know, or they, the, why was the Bible really mass produced for the American people, mass produced for the English people over in UK or whatever. Now it's being mass produced for guess where? Africa. They are mass producing the biblical knowledge in Africa because guess what? They already got us. So now they have to convince the African people that they are not what their culture, the historical culture is. They've taken their historical culture of who they were and taught them to embrace who that colonizer mentality thinks they should be. And yeah. that's who we are today. We are a product of who they think we should be. Right. Our minds, our, th our right. minds think how they think we should think. And it's kind of yeah. weird when you say that because people are like, no, I think for myself and I thought, uh, and it's like, all right, I get that. Everybody wants to feel it as though they think for themselves, but think about the stuff that you like. Think about the clothes that you wear, why you like the certain clothes that you like. Think about why you like the foods that you like or whatever the case is. Everything surrounding our lives has been created by what another person wanted us to think. Yep. So we're, now we're told. Information and how we our perspectives about the world events, our perspectives about the national, the, 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 the events in this country are directed by the way that they trained us to think. So, you, so it's really hard for people to break free from that. What I, you know, what I call it, I call it deprogramming from that. But that's what we have to do because when you deprogram from that think, you open yourselves up to that human think that says, "Yo, this stuff is really messed up. We can't let this stuff continue to happen." So now you ask yourself, "How? How do we prevent this from happening in the future? And what do we do right now to start to change the ship?" And that comes down to love, compassion, and communication. You know, we can't feed that hate anymore. We can't feed that division anymore. Like they tell us to do when they say, go vote. But when you go and vote, you're going to support a candidate that is going against somebody. We can't be going against anybody. You know what I mean? We have to be working together on all fronts. Think about this. On all fronts, we have to be working together. Right. But that's not what the education told us, you know? Well, no, because like you said, they like to control us. And, and the good thing about them uh, printing their Bibles in Africa and sending them down there is a lot of Africans aren't going to believe it. The good thing was that and when Christianity spread, it spread there too. In fact, there are big Christian communities in Ethiopia mm -hmm. and their Bible isn't the Bible that's being printed and sent down there. Right. Like the, the, the reality is, is that there are, I think, 8000 different versions of the Bible that yeah. are out there. Yeah. Yeah. So they speak, their, you know, they speak like. It's so many that they speak thousands of different languages, and right. we don't think about this. Yeah. We don't know none of them because we no. they, this, is, this is so interconnected. G. We're told to learn Spanish, French, all these. We they don't say, Look, learn some African languages. The dialect is thousands of different languages. Learn some of those as well so you can communicate. No, forget about those people, learn Spanish because the Spaniards overran Mexico and that's what's de learned French because the, the French overran Canada and the natives. Now it's crazy what they've done, but I get it. You know, well, it's, 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 it's power. It's power. power. And, and, and they, they say, well, you know, I, I think the mindset is they won, so they're strong. And so we should kind of worship the strong. And the reality mm -hmm. is a lot of the cultures that these colonizers ran over were very peaceful cultures. They were mm -hmm. cultures. Yeah, I mean, there were cultures going back in Africa um, and Native Americans, uh, indigenous, that would have wars and nobody would die. They would have wars over cattle. You know, mm -hmm. they would throw spears and they were about accuracy. Like the wars weren't about murdering people. They were right. contests to decide things, you know. I mean, they even had physical contests and struggles where, you know, like it's like two boys, you know, struggling when you're a kid just to mm -hmm. see who's stronger. OK, right. that wins it. You know, it's like arm wrestling. Yeah, nobody has to, right. Yeah. Nobody has to die. 
but mm-hmm. they but but they pass this ideology that that solving problems is done through extreme violence with right. with with no restraint in murdering people. Right. So, but I don't I don't think you know, a lot of parts of Africa are gonna buy it. I think a lot of cultures there remained intact, even though they did go through and they burned a lot of books, like they did in South America, like they did e- even in the Middle East and Europe, where they destroyed yeah. those cultures. Mm-hmm. But there were peaceful cultures we got to look back to. Um, and because of the religious undertone to the nonsense, um, you know, to anybody who still believes that Jesus Christ is going to come again because you're murdering kids, mm-hmm. you know, that's not Christianity. That's not anything that Jesus, if Jesus was who the Bible says he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. If Jesus comes back, he's coming back to bring the wrath on you. He coming back to kill all the Americans. That's <laughs> if, if if Jesus is coming back, the Yo, wrath that stop, he has don't start me. Gee, don't start is me. not for poor you. people in Palestine. I just, Chris, I feel like I got to tell him because I'm not sure. Not a lot of people paid attention to Sunday school class. Tell and got all. Right. I can tell him. You know, when, when Jesus comes back, it's not for, it's not to fight the, you know, what you call the Babylonians. He's mm-hmm. coming to fight those who are yeah. murdering the least yeah. among and us. Those who are accomplices of it all, too. Right. That's scriptural. He's coming back to put millstones around the necks of those who yeah. are causing the least to stumble. If you, yeah. so, you know, another thing, I, I don't want to get into description stuff, but I, yeah. I love the name of, you know, your channel, you know, deprogram to reprogram mm-hmm. because that's scriptural. You know what that basically says? It says you got to empty your cup to fill it. Mm, right. Yeah. You got to empty your cup to fill it. And if your cup is full of mine and I've been drinking coffee, but if, your <laughs> cup, the cup, yeah. if, it's, if it's full of dirty water, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you can't just put clean water in there. Well, you can keep drinking that dirty water. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. If, you're, if your cup mm-hmm. is full of colonizer mm-hmm. psychology, mm-hmm. violent behavior, looking the other direction when kids are being murdered, you got to pour the cup out. You got to completely empty it. You got to deprogram it. You got to pour it out to reprogram it, to yeah. refill it back up with something good and clean and Go fresh. Go to the streams of nature. The right. streams of nature will provide you with the water of life. The water of life, not the, <laughs> the water of IDF, murder, blood, and violence. And so, you know, so I, I it, 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 the biggest problem with people is what you said, and it's not just done through the Bible. It's done through a lot of different ways. They're told what to think, mm-hmm. how to think it, and and when to think it. And I think Sister Jeannie posted something a minute ago. She was talking about how you know we're trained to believe social change comes through politics, and it doesn't. Mm-hmm. She's spot on right. We're they teach you that it's a false flag. It's like politics. Politics to me, they're a false flag. They're actually useless. There, there's nothing. Yeah good that comes from politics not right. anymore you know right. it's a false flag it's, it's a distraction it's, it's something to get you to be a hamster and run in the wheel and keep running social yeah. change comes through you yeah social right. change comes right. through your mirror when you social change is viral it goes viral quickly mm-hmm. when you love your neighbors when you love the poor when you open up the borders of your yard to the poor kids in your neighborhood mm-hmm you open the borders of your kitchen to them, when you open the borders of your banks to them, mm-hmm. then you're not acting like Donald Trump, <laughs> right, right. which is, which is, which is what, you know, but he's doing that. He did Captain. that. Right. He did that because he knew it worked. He did that because he knew that would get him elected. He's a lot smarter than what everybody. No, very smart. Before. Very smart. Yeah. Man. He is highly intelligent. Yo, this was funny. funny. He's the mm-hmm. smart type. Like, you know, them two, the smart, but just, don't care about how they talk and act because they just know that they they winning. You winning, you don't care how you look to other people because guess what? Behind closed doors, you still winning. So Donald Trump, he don't, he, it's like I didn't realize this. People are so caught up. Donald Trump, Donald, I hate the, uh, and they're dying. The inside is eating them, the mind's going, Donald Trump did it and this, like, uh, that him. It's like, Donald Trump's like this. Make America great again, you dumb motherfucker. Because <laughs> basically, <laughs> he don't care if America great again. Donald Trump is trying to make no. that bank. He's trying that's to support his job. stronghold on the global or the international community. That's all Donald Trump wants to do. And yeah. you know what he's going to do? What's that? Like every other president did, use the American office. Because guess what? Obama 
he got international by using the office and he didn't take, he didn't take American people international to where American people are benefiting from everything. No, right. Obama benefited from office to where he was positioned internationally to become, I don't want to say a powerhouse like the Clintons are right now, because they still are a powerhouse internationally, but they're all using it for different purposes. Not for them. To, yeah, for them, yeah. not to benefit the people. This isn't They're something retired. where, they, oh, the presidents are going to benefit. The presidents are not made to benefit. The, the position is not made to benefit people. The no, position it's not the job. is made to manage things with, a, with a, a, an aura of professionalism, if you must. You know, to keep that the, the professional outlook of America intact. You know how they say, oh, you got to dress in suits to do business. You got to have this yeah. thing to do business. And they have made it to where average everyday Americans have put themselves on a lower pedestal because of how they view these guys that they claim are superior or something. Donald Trump, I don't think Donald Trump's superior at all to me. You know, no. the only way that he may be superior, but, but I don't even see it, is money. But that doesn't mean nothing to me because I don't see money how he does. But He's inferior to us as people. He is. But people don't really know that because they wrap their mind around the American ideology, which says that these dudes are idols. We should worship them. We should fall at their feet because they're presidents or they're politicians or they're Hollywood actors. And it's like, we're cheating ourselves. Yeah, we're cheating they ourselves with the lamestream narratives. I don't want to say mainstream media, but this is lamestream as far as like, status quo standardized thinking yeah you know we're, we're, we we idolize the wrong things i guess you could say yeah well they put on these costumes like brother mark just said he said used car salesman my view of him oh yes, yes. Which is, yeah, well because what why because america needed a used car salesman at yes. that point they yes. just got rid of the intelligent black man and so you need somebody who was different right because somebody yeah. who's different can change things and so this billionaire reality TV host put on a suit, a used car salesman suit, because that's what America needed to see. He right. became what they wanted. And, you know, same thing with Bush. We got Bush was the cowboy yeah. because America needed to see, you know, maybe the cowboys will save us. No, nope, the mm -hmm. cowboy didn't save us. So maybe the black intelligent guy will save us. The guy didn't save us. Maybe we need the poor white used car salesman to save us. And yeah. people keep falling into these narratives. They keep right. giving us a costume. Yeah. They keep yeah. giving adults a superhero to believe exactly. it. They believe it. And and like you said, I mean, the office isn't to make America great again, right? Because mm -hmm. Trump, he's not trying to make America great again, no more than the average American is trying to make their community great again. Right. They're right. not trying to make their house great again. The guy, he's still going out Thursday night drinking with his buddies, not spending yeah. time with his wife. Right. You know, she's, she's going Friday night with the girls. You know, selfish. they're not doing anything they're in the community. They're right. They're all selfish on their own levels. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. Donald Trump, he why would he make America great again if the average American has no interest in making their neighborhood or their family or their, right. you know, or any of that great again? This, yeah. it, it's all a big lie. And it's based in adults worshiping these these demagogues, these these costumes that they put on. And, mm -hmm. and he's just like like uh, Mark said, he is a used car salesman. He is selling because Americans are buying. Obama yeah, was right. selling because Americans are buying. Mm -hmm. Israel Black selling. That's yes. what Obama. They setbacks of twenty years plus. They Obama set black people. Even though you know we got to get away from black anyway, but we it doesn't seem like we will in the time future. But Obama was to set black people back another twenty years because black people gave their power back to politics again. Our power is not defined in politics because. Nobody in this country's power defined in politics, actually, but it is in coming together. You know, when the visuals show us that they don't care about the people, that's our time to come together as people and show them that we care about the people. You know what I mean? And it's funny because the mainstream media, Facebook as well, and a lot of other avenues and outlets are pushing this political agenda on us and upon us to get us focusing on politics again, because we've already seen the evidence that says we shouldn't be focused on politics, but more or less coming together as people. But all the avenues and institutions or things around us are making it political because when you go to work, 
they got CNN on or Fox News, you know, but you can't really talk about it in the way that you want to talk about it because you yeah. have to follow along the mainstream narrative. So you have to play it safe, you know. So if you have that itch, you know, the itch sometimes to be scratching to say something, you got the itch, you got to touch it and scratch it. It's like that itch in the mind is telling you to say something, speak what you are confused or concerned about in a truthful manner, you know, just. Right. If you don't know about Donald Trump, really say that. Don't be in denial like us. Just hate Donald. Just understand who he is and how he's working in the grand scheme of things. Right. Because he, Obama. Yeah. People because, still haven't questioned Obama. They still like Obama was the best. When people say Obama was the best president ever, that's scary. That's very scary because it shows uh, where they're. It shows kind of how they're playing into the psyche of how we think. Right. Donald well, Trump they, was they, the they, worst they, president ever. We just came up for the best president ever. So what's right. the next president, if you must? You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Well, and I think I think they they scare people away with this word. You say something. They scare people away be, with the word politics because you're talking about a politician does not mean it's politics, right? Mm -hmm. Politicians mm -hmm. have stepped out of their place. Right. They've stepped out of the arena of dealing with deals and political matters mm -hmm. and they're dealing with human life, right? They're, they're, they're taking human life. They're, they're preventing um, people from getting, you know, becoming anything great. Like, you know, like yeah. you mentioned, Obama wasn't good for black people. Obama wasn't good for any people, no. but the wealthy. He, yeah. he, he, he was, he was Wall horrible. Wall like he, he was horrible for poor whites as horrible as he was for poor blacks yeah. because yeah. Because that's the job. And so when the, the office of the politician becomes to hurt poor people, it becomes to hurt the middle class while smiling in their faces, we have to talk about the politician because yeah. that that is the monster, right? That's the monster under the bed that's causing all the problems. And so you can't you can't associate politics with politicians because it's not about politics anymore. This isn't about taxes and trade deals and you know, little simple things or, or, or trade among states, right? Mm -hmm. This is dealing with human life. So none of it is politics. Yeah. It, it's going after the monsters under the bed mm -hmm. that the kids in Gaza are screaming out to us right. by giving up their lives to get adults around the world to respond to their pain. Yeah. Just pay attention to us. Just, just hear us out. Just, just, you know what I mean? That's what, so that's where, that's what ultimately it pisses me off, but it keeps me, it keeps the drive alive within me. I think about how our kids are not told to understand what those kids are dealing with. And this is a major flaw in society. And as far as modernized countries or whatever you want to call them, American countries and whatever dem democratic countries, we're not teaching the kids the truth. Some countries do. Some countries do maybe. But here in America, we're not. It's no reason why our children should be salivating at the mouth for Christmas, salivating at the mouth for all these holidays and or birthdays and looking to receive, receive, receive. Give me something for my birthday. Give me something for Christmas. Give me this and that for these holidays and whatever. And they don't have any information about what these other kids are never going to get. What these other kids don't have the privilege of g touching or playing with or just you know, innovating, you know, having the innovate, we have the ability to allow our children to innovate, you know, yeah. these children don't have that. No, they, they only have fight, the drive to fight against the tyrant, the drive to fight against the, the actors and the, the, the hate, the terror that is raining down on them every day. Think about if that was my son or your son, we would be pissed the fuck off. But that is my son and your son. Those are our sons and daughters over there in Palestine. Those are our they sons are. and daughters who were in, 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 in enslaved and chained in America throughout the history. Africa, Ireland, all these other countries. Those were our sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what color of skin they were. Those were our sons and daughters. Right. Those are our sons and daughters in Palestine right now, in Syria right now, Yemen, Somalia. All these different places, our children are suffering. Yeah, but are. we've been told to put the blinders on. Consumerism, indoctrination, educate, privilege. Yeah. You know, look, bathe, bathe in your American privilege and be grateful. Be don't speak about your American privilege. Be grateful that you have it and live your life accordingly. Right. That is completely wrong. I care about my son. 
just like I care about your son, just like I care about your son, how many of you got kids, all that. I care about all y'all kids. I care about, when I see the kids going to school, it scares me because I know they're being indoctrinated the same way we were. Some teachers are great. You know, this is not a, 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 a damper on the teacher because there's some teachers that are great. You know what I mean? Some teachers that have no choice but to work within the confines of this curriculum system and try to throw in their little their little intuition in there when they can. You know what I mean? To help the students out with race, uh, suffering, whatever. They try to throw their it's and bits in to help when they can. But the teachers are hostages because we've allowed them to continue to be hostages no. in the system where we're saying, oh, they're ed- they're getting educated, but what are we educating the kids to be? Business minded? Consumers, yep. money, money, greed, spend. That's what we're educating the kids to be. So now we start to talk about politics. People are like, oh, well, I know the solution for this. More government. I know the solution for this. More capitalism. I know the solution for this. More of the education system teaching the kids to be indoctrinated to think it's all about business as usual. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy because we should feel more concern and compassion for the suffering of those kids worldwide. And the way that we show we do is by teaching our kids the truth. You can't stop. We can't keep sugarcoating this stuff because if they know it now, you know how we're trying to talk about it and bring this stuff to light now. We're, we're so far behind the race because we're trying to talk about it and we're grown. But think about the kids talking about it when they're younger. And the kids talking about it to each other now. And they tell me, said, look, you know what's going on in the past time? We got to figure out a way to do something about it. Because guess what? The kids have so much innovation and they can find solutions to these problems if only they knew the truth. You know what I mean? If only they don't, they're not fixed with the knowledge that says, oh, you have to focus on college and focus on school and education in the American sense. And instead, we teach them to focus on the international things that are happening because of our American ignorance, you know? And it's, and it's, it's, it's kind of scary because a lot of parents think that thinking is out, out of line, I guess you could say, because we're American. Oh, you're out of line. My kids need to be innocent. They don't need to know about this. They don't need to know what's going on over They don't need to see that. But right. then it's like, wait, we're okay with our kids seeing the hateful, divisive, rhetoric on television, cartoons, movies, violence on TV. We're okay with them seeing the violence on Hollywood movies and killing, the killing is cool, but we're not going to show them the real life stuff that is not cool. And that is what we're supporting or what we're being told to support when we told to vote for American politicians, vote for America to be great again, vote to uplift America. If you want to uplift America and you want to ignore the world, I mean, that's just foul. You know what I mean? That is so, yeah. and it's, it's what we're dealing with now, bro. And it's like, I mean, that's why I laugh because it's crazy. Well, it, it is crazy. It is crazy. I was thinking about a saying, they say that um, no greater love that a, that a man has for his brother than to lay down his life. What that's is it? church joint too. Look at you singing church and everything, man. You got to what is it? <laughs> but, uh, hang no on, greater, hang it's like this. It's not, yeah. it sounds like no greater love, no greater love. Then a man who laid down his life for his own, you know, it's some, it's some church. I used to sing it. I was singing in the choir. I know. I know what you're not I singing know. today because you don't know the lyrics. I know, <laughs> I know that, but that's real. That's real. But, but, but it's, a, it's a real statement. So think about it. But, yeah. but what greater love is it for a child to lay down their life mm-hmm. for their community? Mm-hmm. Like, think about that. They're, mm-hmm. they're raising their kids to be in tune with fixing their world we're raising our kids to be in tune with maintaining the world in its broken format now Mm -hmm. and 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 i think that's the that's what we really have to focus on is is like you said we have to envision our kids in that environment and if we can envision them there then we can respond how we're supposed to Right. Mm-hmm. Like if we are raising a village, if it is a world that we're raising, you know, when you're raising kids, some kids, they need a little more attention than others. Some kids are doing OK and you need to help this one with math because he's not doing so well in math. You need to help this one. Mm-hmm. You know, he needs to do this or he needs that. Our kids are fine in the West. They have food. 
They have mm. water. Mm. They have safety. Our kids and all over the world, and it's not just Gaza. I think Brother Paul just was talking about Yemen. We don't we don't talk about Yemen anymore. Yeah, man. It's not even in the news. Not even in the news. That's why yeah. it's real important. Right. If it's like you think, news, that means right. something going down. Something real. I mean, think, think about yeah. it like this. We have so many artificial calamities that are happening right now. We don't even have the news cycles to talk about all the children that we are committing genocide against, that we are shooting, that we are allowing to get shot. Like, we, there's just, it's so sick the times that we live in. I Half the time, brother, I don't even think it's real. I don't. I don't yeah. think I mean, this is a Truman show. I'm looking around, I'm looking I'm at the like, camera. <laughs> Y'all watching me. But this, this ain't real. We ain't I'll be looking out. around thinking hey, like, this, this shit real? This, this ain't real. This ain't yet. Like, y'all really actually expect me to believe that you're okay with an artificial famine in Yemen, Yemen. And you're starving 20 million people. And y'all not talking about the politicians? Oh, come on. God, Crazy, stop. Man. It's real. Where the camera at? I'm, I feel like I'm a, what's America. the guy's name of the movie? Uh, what did uh, Tom? Hanks, what's that? Tom Hanks. Who was in that movie? Uh, Which one? Castaway. Uh, Truman. Truman. Truman Show. Yeah. Jim, uh, Jim Carrey. Carrey. Jim Carrey. I feel like Jim Carrey. Like, well, oh, yeah. hang on. I was. No. You know how he was driving in the we circle. Are. We <laughs> are. Are. Right. He was that driving show, in the. That, that movie was real because it was real. What it was doing was this. It was spotlighting exactly how we've been programmed. That's what. Yeah. It, and from when I was young, I was laughing and giggling at. It. I'm like, yo, Jim Carrey, funny. He was my. That's funny. Them yeah. carry funny yeah. shit and this and that. Yeah, he's funny. Like, dog, that's my dog. And then yeah. I watched when I got older. I'm like, wait a minute. This, this mess stuff up. is messed up. Like, this is how you. I'm like, this is how we could look. If you try to break free, the people around you are trained. Yeah. They are trained to make you stay within the box. And it's, yeah. it's your wife. It could be your wife, your friends, your co workers. They don't know it. No. See, this is the thing. In the movie, they, they knew. In the movie, it was all orchestrated where they knew and they had to just zero in on truth. Right. Now, people don't know it because they have been psychologically broken to the point where this is just something that's normal for them. Oh, you don't like America? You're wrong. You shouldn't say that. You think we shouldn't support the flag? You're wrong. You shouldn't. And it's like, wait a minute. Do you not realize that you're not thinking for yourself? You're only relaying that what you have been indoctrinated to believe. So it was like, when you think, when I started to think for myself, I don't want to say that. I'm not going to lie because I'm not, my, my thinking isn't fully mined yet because I still have a little bit of American stuff to give away. But when I started to think about the children and adults and elders, okay, when you think about the elders and you see the lack of communication we have through generational gaps, and I realized they put a hit out on us. The hit was so that way we don't understand the old, embrace the young and new, while in the middle, we try to form a communication connection throughout it all. You know, because what we're supposed to be doing as middle age individuals, whatever, we're supposed to be connecting the elder knowledge with the younger people and the way they can have the truth of history. So that way their lives are not being, you know, operating in the tune of lies and deception, you know, because we've been deceived as a people in mass. And that's because we haven't communicated with the elders in the way that we sought truth and brought that truth from the elders after we processed it, examined the, the events and told it to our young. You know, we have to, we have to communicate differently. We have to embrace things anew. So it's like, you know how now they say, oh, the old people are just old and this and that. I'm going to start something where it's like going to be a, a, a thing, like I got a nonprofit or whatever. I'm going to start something where I'm going to try to get the younger people, like teenagers, to go to the old folks home and do charity work or just do nonprofit volunteer work. Not for the fact of helping the old people, but teaching the young how they have to embrace and look at the older people di differently with compassion, you know, because they're like, oh, the old folk, let them die and this and that, and so whatever. But we need to have compassion for the elders because they can teach. I'm going to give you a, a gem. A lot of them realize their mistakes too late, but a lot of them want to correct those wrongs, but they can't do nothing because more or less they're in nursing homes. They're, they're, their families put them up somewhere where they don't really have a, 
a, an ability to communicate with a mass of people, but yeah. they have a lot of information that they want to give back to us that is against what they've lived. You know what I mean? This yeah. is what yeah. this is what I realized, but they don't know how to communicate it because yeah. we're so savage. They're like, well, who cares about it? the people don't need they don't they alienated. We alienated our old. We've alienated our old just like we're kind of teaching our young to alienate the international community. Oh, absolutely. So I feel like that's something that we need to change now. Del, a lot of things. I mean? A lot of things. A lot of things we got to change. Um, Sister Sandra just said, um, I've learned and evolved much since the 2016 primary. Brother Malcolm said, Wow. Man thinks wow. the same thoughts at 60 as he does when he's 30. He's wasted 30 years of his life. And it's just powerful and spot on. And I don't want to trigger anybody's identity politics. Right. People, when somebody says something, doesn't matter who it is. Did yeah, Brother Malcolm, did he go some wrong ways in his life? Yes, he did. We all do. But the point is, every man's got some truth. Every bars, woman has yeah. truth. And when bars. they say something that's true, accept the truth. And so the reality is, is right. If you are the same person you were 10 years ago, you're wasting our oxygen. Bro. <laughs> If you believe the same things, you're just supply. I mean, we appreciate your nitrate. You're yeah, dumping yeah, it. Right, 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 right. You know, but you're you're wasting our space. You're wasting our oxygen. We have to continue to evolve. Um, there was another so true, something, something else someone else said I wanted to highlight real quick. Uh, Estella Jordan. She okay. said people wittingly or unwittingly protect the status quo. You know, when they parrot mainstream propaganda. Oh, really? And so, right. So, if really? you are still parroting, parroting the same propaganda you were mm -hmm. 10 years if 10 mm -hmm. years ago you were a Democrat and today you're a Democrat, there might be an issue. If 10, 10 years th ago, if you were a Republican yes. and, and you're still, still a Republican, Republican back, there's yes. something wrong, right? You know, we, you know, That's we kind of want a little oxygen back. We want to share some of that oxygen with mm -hmm. people in mm -hmm. Gaza, mm -hmm. you know, but we have to. We definitely have to look back to the wisdom of the elders. We have to look back. Our parents were a lot smarter than us. The parents but before them were a lot smarter than them. Yeah. And yeah. apparently it's because they have perfected propaganda. They've right. made it so delicious and corrupt and mm. pure that we can't even. We can't even wake up people that are so locked into it right yeah the more the more productive their life the more successful mm. they are mm. the mm. less they're they're willing yeah less they're willing to look at it they're they not even, it's like this why would i look into that when i'm and, making it just fine in this american life you know i'm making i got the american dream on my side and i'm making it good in the american yes. way why would i look into any anti-american information what? Well, right. Why, why would I turn my back on it? And why? so we have to redefine what we consider success. Like I look at success differently. You know, I have a lot of friends who, you know, they've gone to school, they got their degrees, they got yeah. jobs. And I did the same thing, made a lot of money. But at a certain point in time, if success to you 10 years ago is the same thing success yeah. to you is today, Ten years before, yep, yep. you're wasting our oxygen. Yep. You're, 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 you're sucking it up. Still the same? Right. If, if if your version of success when you were 20 in college trying to get that degree in Ph.D., mm -hmm. if that version of success, that version of you in your 20s is the same version of you in your 40s, your 50s and your 60s working in corporate America, working for big business. You're you're sucking up our oxygen. You can't change and evolve a world if you're not evolving. You can't do any good for humanity. If you still have the same mentality you did when you were a child, you were 20 years old when you went mm -hmm. to college and you thought that you were going to fix things and help people with that. If you're still trying to acquire wealth, if you're still trying to save up for that retirement, yeah, you're not evolving. And, and I think really that's what a lot of what we're talking about. We have to go back to evolving. We stopped evolving. Right. We stopped evolving and we started chasing money. We we fell in love with money while we go to church and we scream, the love of money is <laughs> No, the love of money bad. <laughs> money bad. Money bad. Money bad. No, money bad. Money's bad, God. Money's bad. Well, give me your money. 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 Put it in the plate. Your money's bad. Put it in the plate. Your money's bloody. Put it in Put the plate. Put the money in the plate. 
You bet the next listen. Yo, I'm going to give you a bar. This is for religious folks. It's sad. Tithing, scam. If people donated, if people gave 10% of their pay to humanity, think about how much more would have changed. As opposed to giving 10% to the church, they have gave that 10% of their earnings to humanity and just existence and the betterment of um, people. So much would have been changed by now. But I mean, yeah. that's neither here nor there. It's okay. But yeah, well, I, you know, you know, when that was most highlighted to me, brother, that was most highlighted to me. I went to a church, they had tithing rows. Wow. So if if wow. you paid your mandated tithe, you get a row. You got to set no ro rows. So oh, you got bro, to you got to sit in a certain row. Yeah, brother. So no. You got to sit closer <sighs> to the God. I mean, does say God? I mean, closer to the preacher. Preaching, preaching God. Preaching God. I'm preacher God. sorry, preaching God. Preaching God. You're preaching God. You, 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 and, and this is an anti-church. I'm not. This is not an anti-church. Right, 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 right. This is a message of rhetoric, the people. Rhetoric. Right. There are people who worship a God that taught love these philosophies, these principles, and there are people who worship a book. Mm -hmm. There are people who worship other men because they stand behind pulpits. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, but the idea that they have tithing rows, if you didn't pay your tithe, you can't sit in your, that row. You got to sit further back. Um, they keep asking for, it's a good thing to let, if you still go to church and stuff, it's a good thing to let your ministers live on faith. You know mm -hmm. how you do that? You don't pay your tithe. Don't give them none. Don't pay your tithe. Don't give right? them none. You feel if, me? If, if, right, if, if if you don't pay your tithe, and then they'll, they'll, they'll live with some faith. You know who has the most faith? How much faith they I, know, got I know, I know you know this. You know, who, you know who got the most faith out of people I know? Homeless people. Yes. Yeah, all right, all right. That's all right. faith. Then that'll take you back to the to, Tibetan monks. Why do mm. you think the Tibetan monks, they were homeless people. They'd sit out there and they put the plate out there and they would teach and preach. And if and if what they said, you know, was effective in someone's life, people come out, give them a little bread. Sometimes they give them money, they give them a little water or something. Those people lived on faith. Those were real true. The most I might do that. Have, huh? Was I might be a monk in Africa. I mean, in America. <laughs> you know, yeah, people compassion and stuff and put a plate out, see who's going to feed me. Yeah, but that, but again, this is why you say right complexion though. <laughs> Lori just said it. This is why you see Joel Osteen on TV, and you don't right. see, you know, you no. don't see the homeless pastor, you don't see monks, because that's the position you're supposed to be in that place of poverty, right? Yep. Because when you put, you know, the the prosperity teaching, I guess is what you call it, where you know your pastor's supposed to drive a Cadillac, you know, yeah. supposed to wear a day, supposed to wear a nice suit, you know. To me. And I and I, I try my best to not sound judgmental, but because I got mine too. We all got our own yeah, church. Yeah, yeah. But if you got gators on and they're six hundred dollars shoes, you got a pastor with a three thousand dollars suit. Yeah. And fifty thousand dollar whip. You right. And and kids in the next town over can't even yeah. they don't have a sandwich for school. They don't even have peanut butter to go with the jelly on the bread, right? And you know the peanut butter sandwich that that sucks, right? You just get just a peanut butter salad a sandwich it's ain't got no jelly. Would love that. You choke, right? They love it, but then the kids who don't have the jelly too, they choke on it. They, that's yeah. a choke. We get to call those horse chokers. They choke, choke it. It's called yeah, choke. choke sandwiches. You choke jelly, them down. called choke sandwiches. Those are I'm gonna tell y'all, but those are highly popular in jail because mugs ain't got nothing in there, and they yeah. choke sandwiches come through. They'll get five peanut butters, and that lasts them like a month. Yeah. Oh, but you know what? I'm I'm gonna go there for a minute. I'm gonna go there for a minute. One of my good buddies, man, growing up, they threw him in prison. He spent right. a, he spent many days. This is when I turned I started turning on the Democrats when I realized right. that they right. weren't about helping it, people. It they were about putting bulls. people in prison. private prison bulls. It, yeah, private prisons. And so I, I but he taught he you know people in scarce environments. They're the most innovative people on the yeah. planet. Oh my gosh! I, I started. I mean, like when you look at some of the inmates. And how smart they become. They sit around, they just read law books and you know how they evolve. I was I was just thinking about it. You mentioned food, food came to mind. Um, he gave us recipe. And this is this was back when I used to eat. I, I'm a vegetarian now. I used to eat, you know, right. meat and fish and stuff. Right, right. You take Ray, Raymond noodle soup, which don't ever eat Raymond noodle soup because wax noodles. It's wax, it'll kill you. You're going to get carcinogens and die. Right. But Raymond noodle soup with with uh tuna fish yeah and cheese. mayonnaise all right and man mix it all up, right? That's right. yeah, well you can get it at, at the commissaries in prison and man that's delicious 
That it's stuff, banger, is, right? yeah. When, I, when, when you don't put like a lot of water in it, I know we're talking about jailhouse recipes, isn't it? <laughs> but, but it's listen, real though. It's real, you, bro. But you, but you know how it's we got real. here because the most impoverished people, mm -hmm. are the most innovative, innovative people yes, on the planet. Yes, these are people you don't want to destroy. These are people that you want to listen to, like those kids in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, the girls who made. Then they, they made a, a a a some some sort of energy device that ran on urine. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know if yeah. you, you heard this was years back. Oh, they yeah. I don't have to post an article article yeah. about that. But all these free energy devices that mm -hmm. are being developed by these impoverished world, like look at the creativity of the kids in Palestine. Yeah, they got like, everything. They, they're they, so smart. They are beyond yeah, smart. Crazy. You know, I think they're smarter <laughs> than Americans. Well, but, but I mean, then, I want to say that because. I mean, as more far as innovative. develop, develop, right, they right. develop more, more innovative than Americans because they can keep the innovation. Right. Yeah. If, That's if, I can, if I'm an American kid and I can pull this up and I go look, find up anything I want, enough. I don't have to create anything. Yeah, you don't got to create nothing. Right. But if I have to create something to survive, then I can become a savant. And so the thing that kind of gets me is I look at Nikola Tesla, look at the Einsteins, I look at just the smartest people we've ever had on this planet who evolved the human race. They were very creative people. And so we got all these creative minds and brains in these impoverished places in Palestine, Gaza, the West Strip, you know, Congo, even in our prison system. And we're just killing these people. Mm. We are setting the human race back thousands, if not hundreds of years, because we're destroying some of the best brains we got. Yo, yo think about this. We still have a massive innovation here in America. And now when I realized it is when I had my son. I've realized it because I've watched closely. You know, I've watched him closely and then I've watched my nieces and nephews closely. But we're taking them away from the innovative minds and we're telling them to embrace a, a system that is structurized and also downplaying the innovation of our children. And when I realized this, it was scary. Because I thought about the millions and millions and millions of students that have already traveled the paths of the 12 year education system, college as well, and the likes thereof. The innovation starts early. Innovation starts at like three or four when, it's, when, when it comes to tune with these kids. But we don't give them the necessary tools to maybe more or less embrace their innovation you know instead what we're doing is telling them what they should embrace we're not letting them tell us the innovation and creativity they have we're just like oh no go to school and learn numbers and if it ain't english or numbers then you're not smart if you can't read or write right if you don't read good in american english you're not smart that's a lie if you don't if you can't equate these numbers right in the american way you're not smart that's another lie Right. I realize we've been helping that lie. We've been helping by saying, oh, well, my child is dumb because he gets D's. He's a D student, so he's not as smart as he should be. And that child is very much still innovative and smart, but yes. maybe he's in, he, maybe he's resistant. He's resistant to this flawed education system that we have that doesn't allow him to be innovative or her to be innovative, you know? The the money. Okay, now this one comes down to money. Money buys the ability for your children to be innovative. So if you have money, you can send your child to one of those schools where they have all these products, computers, technology, and they can innovate with this new technology that no nobody else has. No other students have, and whatever. Hence, I'll talk about. I talked about this in the little stream I did for information sake. But Bill Gates. Bill Gates went to a school where they had stuff that even colleges didn't have, okay? So think about how innovative he could have, think about how he learned and adapted to his innovation through the technology that he was privileged to have. And of course the finances, because they had all the, they had all types of money to give him to finance his ideas. Everybody doesn't have that. We don't have the money to finance our children's ideas. We don't have the money to give our children access to the innovation that a lot of privileged folk have. You know, so now we talk about leveling the playing field. Okay, how are we going to level the playing field in this modern era? 
we can't do it by continuing to go along with the same system of operations that we've seen prevail to this day. We have to be innovative in the way we create new teaching environments, new learning environments, but also mm -hmm. um, our own ability to see. You know, we have to be able to visualize the innovation in the youth, but we look at the youth like, oh, they're innocent. They have to be taken care of in the way that is. Uh, so subtle and whatever, but yeah, like a mother's love is key, but a mother is also innovative in the way that they let their children, you know, grow. Even though they want to protect them, they also want their children to be innovative. Now, the family structure has been guided by the American dream. The American dream says, if you're not focused on college, if you're not focused on the American patriotism, you're, you're focusing on the wrong things. If you're not you're focused not on sure. money, money, you're focused on, you have to focus on money. Right. You don't want to be successful. You don't want to be successful. You're, oh, what do you, what do you want to live in the woods? This is what people say to me. Chris, what do you want to live in the woods now? You don't like money, money. You want, I'm not, it's not, that's, I don't have to live in the woods. What I have to do is adapt and be innovative in the structure and environment that we've been, you know, living around. And we yeah. all can do that. We all have the ability to do that once we take our minds outside of that which we have been, I guess you want to say, you know, they beat, they really beat this stuff in our heads. Like they beat it in our heads, 12 years, college, lifestyles and everything, commercials, TV, they beat it in our heads. But we have to ask of ourselves to seek the innovation that we still have. Because whether you're 13 or a 40 or 50 or 60, you still have innovation. But yeah. the only thing is you have to seek and find that innovation. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And you have to keep going forward. Um, Sister Jeannie was talking about AI and Brother Mark's talking about That's YouTube. That's real shit. And I, YouTube and I was has helped, yeah. YouTube yeah, I mean, has helped. These, these things are just tools, right? Mm -hmm. I, I have my youngest son. He actually started reading at an extremely early age because okay. of YouTube. Okay. He loves Star Wars. And he knew he had to learn how to spell certain words to look them up on YouTube to mm -hmm. watch certain cartoon episodes of Star Wars. Okay. And so these things are tools. We can use them. AI, that's a tool, mm -hmm. right? Now, mind you, if you watch Common's uh, commercials on uh, Oh, my God. I'm going I'm to smack, smack Common in a damn commercial. You know, but what I, the hell I, is you parenting this shit? <laughs> look, look, but you know, but the thing is, is but he's right about a lot of things. Yeah, it's like, it's funny though, right? <laughs> You know, the problem with AI isn't AI. It's it's that it's a tool and it's being utilized for the 0.01%, right? It's yeah, being utilized for corporations and greed. And so the idea you're going to make your world better with AI right now is wrong. That's like mm -hmm. saying you're going to make Israel better with rifles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, but not by murdering little children. Right, right. So, so I think these things are tools. But, you know, another big part of our problem is, you know what I like to do? Mm -hmm. I like to go to Facebook sometimes and I like to look at the trending news. Oh, okay. and, and the reason why is because the trending news, it's based on a lot of factors, right? They have a lot of algorithms to show you what are other people talking about, okay. but what are other people talking about in your fields of interest, mm. right? So keep in mind, I don't click on anything that says ABC News, NBS, Fox, yeah. any of that. Da, 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 da. Like I don't pay any attention to any of that. Ever. The top, ever. ever. The top ever. trending right now is the royal wedding. Uh -huh. Not Yemen. You know, not AI dominating the, the world. One, right? Not, you know, not the kids in West Bank or Gaza. Mm -hmm. But the very top is the royal wedding. Royal wedding. Second is JJ Watt, Houston, oh, Texans defensive in, you know, in for play. Three is Melania Trump. She returns to the White House after a kidney procedure. Oh, wow. You know, like, I mean, I, and I could go down it. I won't waste time. Planned Parenthood, Clayton, you know, Georgia shooting, uh, South China Sea, like all these things. I go down, down, all the way down to 10 and nowhere is it even listed artificial famine. Nowhere is it listed, you know, kids don't have food. Kids are dying. Kids die of starvation in right. America. But yeah, these are things that they use to get people to focus on. Well, this is what everybody else is thinking about. So this is what I should be thinking about. Mm -hmm. And and once again, live streaming in these videos, these are just tools. Yeah, all it. of these things are tools. You can use Facebook to change the world, or you can also use it to help them continue. <laughs> the world, right. 
Like yeah. you can change your, that's, that's comments thing. How you can change the world. How will you use your tools and things? And so for me, and I appreciate anybody who, who shared, I don't know about inviting cause I'm getting tired. We about to wrap this up, yeah, but, yeah, but um, I appreciate you guys who share our, our streams, but appreciate it's all about too. where do you spend your time? How mm -hmm. are you using your tools? How are you using your life to either suck up our oxygen or to help the kids who are most in need, who are crying out in the dark. You're you know, talking. are you spending that time in the vindicators when people say things that are stupid, illogical, that Israel's defending itself or mm -hmm. that gun control is a good idea and let's utilize the most violent people on the planet to help us with gun control. You know, that the prison industrial complex is a good idea, that mm -hmm. it helps society to put kids at the age of 16 in cages, make them monsters and then release them out and blame them for not doing anything good in life of all races and colors. You know, if is it a good idea to blame the police for laws they didn't even write? You right. know, is it a good idea? You know, and so all of these things we have are tools. Social media is a tool. Your mouth is a tool. Your brain is a tool. We can use these things to innovate our world or we can use these things to make the 0.01% wealthier and wealthier and wealthier and more powerful and more powerful. And um, you know, so but uh, but those those are the things that I think that are that are interest me is that Real. we're we're not evolving, we're not getting better, mm -hmm. and we got to get better. Some of us are, some yeah. of us are are lighting up, uh, you know, are lighting up light mm -hmm. in the dark. Some of mm -hmm. us are becoming are trying to warm this cold earth. Uh, I posted something the other day. I said I love Facebook. I love Facebook. Mm -hmm. While everybody's poking dark mucker, muckerberg, zuckerberg, pluckerberg, like that. I hate Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, you idiot. And then they're like this. this. Like this. Oh, I'm, I'm just a great meme. I have a I hate Mark Zuckerberg though. <laughs> right. You know, I have yeah, a different you know, Mark Zuckerberg is a billionaire, you know, and I and I just the billionaires and I we're just not from the same right. street, yeah. right? Yeah. So we can't agree on most things. But my thing is that Facebook is a phenomenal tool. I love it. I love it. On Facebook. I can post a, a question or a thought. That thought gets chewed up and regurgitated by some of my friends that are on every continent on this planet. Right, right. They're from different walks of life. They've seen different things. Oh, They've right. had different experiences. Some of them are 20 years old. Some of them are in their 80s. Yeah, the, right. And they can chew it up and they can spit it right back at me mm -hmm. and help me to learn. Facebook yes. for me is is a university like that, that and, and honestly that's, that's what it is for me way of looking at it, it. <laughs> is, it is a university really i is. am being educated by people all over this world yeah. we have never in history had a, an ability to take a thought and put it in front of thousands of people and perfect that thought mm -hmm. to come back and make you smarter exactly exactly and if we're all educating each other we're all educating each other. And so I get the, you know, we have to get off of Facebook and all that. Like I get all of that, but to some degree, I don't, I get that we should be boycotting tools that are censoring us, but if they're not censoring a hundred percent and we're actually getting smarter, we're making more friends, we're uniting more people. We're helping kids in Gaza, get their message out. We're helping kids in Yemen, you know, so they can't cover it up with the trending news. Right. We might actually be doing ourselves a bigger disservice. We might actually, by, by giving social media over and walking away and giving it over to the bunnies and the kittens and the cute pictures and the trending news and the royal wedding, by giving it over, we actually might be setting humanity back even further. I think we really need to think about are are we are we even being woke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we as woke, mm -hmm. or are we as intelligent, enlightened, enlightened mm -hmm. in fixing things as we think we are? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a tough. That's a good question to ask. Like daily, I ask myself this daily: like, am I evolving? Did I evolve yesterday? What What did I learn new? And what did I, what was I able to process differently? This is something that's really crucial to, like you said, how we evolve and learn and educate ourselves as people. When you go to Facebook, you should understand first and foremost that you're going to see stuff that you don't like. 
that should be always understood immediately. Mm-hmm. You're not going there to salivate over the things you don't like. See, this is what people have to understand. We shouldn't be going to Facebook to, oh, I hate this person, so let me go and see. Oh, I hate this person. We're coming on Facebook with the same way we're attacking the real world issues. We're seeing things we don't like and we're reactionary to it. Not we, but a lot of people. And that's not, that's a choice, shall I say. Here goes the choice, the Kanye thing. This is a choice. You have a choice to let your mind be guarded in the way that you can use these tools in a positive and meaningful way. And you have a choice to let your mind be so scrambled and hateful that you can use these tools in a divisive and meaningless manner where we're not evolving, where you're not evolving. Because when I evolve, I'm trying to help other people evolve. You know what I mean? So I'm talking, I'm trying to put stuff out there that I'm thinking that my, it's not for, I'm not going to say everything that I say is for everybody because it can't be, you know what I mean? But it's for that one person that I might find that wants to think differently. You know what I mean? That wants to think anew or maybe have a different perspective than that which they've already created in their own mind. You know, so it's like, I take a lot of information from you uh, and a lot of people on Facebook. Like I really connect with a lot of things that we all say because I don't agree with everything that we all say, but I know that it's not about agreeing with everything that we all say because then it would be fake. Then I would be fake. If I say, oh, I agree with everything Gerard say or Harsh or this person or that or that person, I'm fake. I'm not looking. That's not what we, we shouldn't be looking to agree with everything. Nope. We should be looking to understand and evolve the way we're thinking. The and, mirror. And, and, yeah. It's about the mirror. It's about, it's about the mirror. Being smart. Half the time, I don't agree with myself. <laughs> you, yo, yo. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I, I, I'm talking to myself. And I'm like, man, you is a dummy for that. You can't be, you can't be serious. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll say something. And I'll watch you. I'll watch Brother Harsh is here. What's up, Harsh? Harsh I'll watch Harsh. Up, I'll watch Ty. I watch Claudia. I watch Brother Al. I watch, you know, Patricia. I watch different people. And I'm like, you know what? Dang, Gerard, you stupid, man. You was wrong. You, <laughs> you know, I, you, you don't make no sense. Well, you were close to right, but you didn't. Maybe you didn't eat your Wheaties this morning. You didn't really form the thought out the way you. Processor's did. not working. Right, like Brother Mark will post something, or Paul will post something, or Jeannie, or Deborah, or somebody yeah. will post something. I'm like. Dang, what was I thinking? I missed I know, that. Right? You know, you connect but it. it helps you get it. Though. Shelly's another one. Right. Shelly Musker, right. you'll post something. And mm-hmm. so I don't even agree with myself, and I'm not supposed to. Not I'm, supposed to. But, you know, this is a journey in getting smarter. This is yes. a journey in evolving. It's a journey in looking in the mirror and making ourselves better and being okay with people being not okay you know, being don't agree with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why, that's what, that was the hardest thing for me was to be okay with being wrong. Like, I couldn't really come to grips. Like, I'm not wrong. I'm not, well, I would think that I was wrong, but it's clear, like, you may be off on this one, buddy. Slow down. You know what I mean? Slow down. And I realized that I had to continuously tell myself that I'm not right about anything. And I shouldn't expect for others to be right about everything either, you know, because that would be a disservice not only to myself, but to them, to expect people to be perfect, to expect people's thoughts to be perfect, because we're dealing with a system that, has um, hindered our evolution, you yeah. know? So we're all imperfect and that's for life. That's for life long. You know, we, we, we strive for more or less understanding, I should say. We strive for understanding not only ourselves as individuals, right. but how we connect to the whole, you know, and also how the whole connects to us. But when we do this in hate, that's when we go down the wrong path. You know, when we start, because you can evaluate, you can evaluate yourself and be hateful to the point where you're not evolving because you're just so hateful to, or you're just so bad on yourself and you're just so bad on everybody else as well, because you really haven't figured out yourself and why you have so much hate resonating within you. And when I did that, I'm like, yo, wait, I don't, I don't really hate people. You know what I mean? I said, damn, do I hate people? And I'm like, no, I can't. It's like, I really can't. It's like, I love people, even if they is crazy and off their rockers. You know what I mean? I'm like, I love people. I love the crazy off their rockers people. You know what I mean? Because look, a lot of our family and friends are those crazy off the rockers people. Or or worse. Or worse. I'm going to say, I'm going to say worse. 
I get in debates with people, and not really debates, but discussions about like Israel. Like that's been on my mind all week. If you watch my page, that's always been that's been on my mind. But and I disagree with people, and they're they're supporting Israel. But as as hurtful as that is to me, sometimes when I see stuff, they actually care enough to have a discussion about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They they're actually trying to work through supporting the right thing. Right. And I have family and friends that are just doing bunnies and kittens, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing posts about the wedding. They're, they don't even care enough right. to engage right. and have a discussion. And so somebody asked me that this week, he's like, how do you have patience to talk to people who support Israel? Because I, I love kids in Gaza so much, right. right? This is a person who wants to talk about it. And so as wrong as sometimes we feel they are or what they say, they're actually engaged. Yes, yes, there you and, go. And, it, and, it's, you go. and it's more damning to, to have a world of people who won't engage than people who are maybe didn't get all the information. They're on a different side, but they are engaging. Mm -hmm. And so that's important. And the other thing I, I was going to say, you know, I think about live stream and I, I, I really do want to tell everybody in the audience how much we appreciate you guys. Yes. Like you have no idea how much it is. It is one of the hardest things to do is to put yourself out here on these little video things mm -hmm. and be wrong. It's hard. <laughs> right. It's hard because, you know, I, I don't think we're commentators. We are basically scapegoats. Mm -hmm. We are we are we are questioners more than we're anything. Right. We listen to what's happening. We, we read what's going on. And we question, does that make sense? Yeah. And we put ourselves out there. And more often than not, we the, the thought's not completely solid. It has to be tweaked and, and twerked. And, you know, uh, uh, you go live. So sometimes, Chris, I see you go live in the morning. And li in the morning live is the hardest because that kind of starts off the day. I don't yeah. even watch. I don't watch TV. I watch my live streamers before I, I, know, watch, right? I watch live streams. I'm like, man, this yeah. is my TV right here. I'm right. so happy when I catch everybody. You feel well, me? Well, you want to be there with your family. Like, you, I, like, yeah, I, I, talk, I, I was talk. out there with avatars. I, half the people, I, I don't even know what they look like, but I know their names. And they're the usual suspects. They're always there. I love them to death. You know, but we put stuff out there. And they drive, <laughs> and, and some of them, they'll send you messages in, 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 in messaging and say, yeah, well, you know, you need to think about this. You need to look at this. Like, they won't yeah. tell you you're wrong. Right, right. Give you something that'll kind of, you know, that direct you in your comment way. section, you're wrong. And so it is a hard thing to do, but um, I love the work. I love right, the work. Right, right. I love right. the work because I feel I am getting smarter. I mm -hmm. feel that we do have enough intelligent people in this Facebook family who aren't really camera people, I guess. They don't want to get on camera and they don't mm -hmm. want to, you know, do like, but right. they're engaged enough. That's where it's take time out of their day and listen to two or three hours of different people talking you know, about different topics and helping them to tweak that thought, right? Mm -hmm. That's huge. Like mm -hmm. you, you, I have great love for people who are engaged. Yes, sir. That's you so true. You don't have to agree. If you're That's posting true. live streams and you're talking about MMT and you're talking about, you know, currency and Bitcoin, yeah. Yeah. I have my disagreements with them. Yeah. But by That's far- so it's still By far, it's all good because yeah, they're still yeah. brothers. I it's call them brother, brothers. Yeah, that's they're still like. family. You right. know, there was a big blow up with, oh man, you know, with Claudia and Debbie. And I, this is where I, I, I got introduced to a lot of people. Okay. That whole Ajamu Baraka and, and people I don't know and Green Party. It was a big blow up and, you know, racial things were going on. No, no, I remember that too. And I was it, pissed it, about that, bro. Yeah, yeah it, and, and, and even that with crazy. that, you know, even with that, and the disagreements I have with people where they landed on that. Yeah. We're still family. Yeah, that's why I do. Yeah. It's so, yo, bro, that's so true. Right, man. like, like you know, Damn. hurtful things are said. Hurtful things came out. Too people many. Too many. Inside. And unfortunately, there are still people who are still taking positions bro, inside. You had to pick a side, bro. You, you know, to pick a side, bro. You you know so right. We know, well, well, it's that hate that people keep going. But my thing is, but even still, these are people who are engaged in questioning the yeah. establishment. Right. And I still call them brothers. And they are brothers. That's what they we are. We don't need to disagree and, and, and to a point where we are separated further from people who 
refuse to engage. Yeah, yeah. At that's least they mean. are engaging and they're trying. Mm -hmm. And that's where my love is, is for people who are standing up to question the machine. Yes, sir. Yes, you know, sir. That's the, that's that's the family. The family aren't people who agree. No, no. The family are people who people are standing are up, who oh, know man. that today is sick enough that they want to question it. And if how you question is with MMT, I love you to death. Yeah. If, how if you, you question, if you question in the economics of MMT, right. that's all. That it's I, all good. See, it's all good. People think you questioning them is questioning the motive or the 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 the, the, the end game. No, we. I think we all have the same end game, but we're all trying to stay engaged, and that's what we must do: is stay because what you know, I might not know, and what I know, you might not know. But nope. if we utilize that engagement and communication, we'll know more together. You know what right. I mean? Because you can act; one person can act like they have it all figured out, and right. then alienate themselves from a whole mass of other people that know X Y Z about X Y Z, and you have you can be clueless about X Y Z. But you think you haven't it all figured out? Well, yeah. allow you to alienate yourself from a mass of understanding that is needed at this time, and that's what we really need is evolution through understanding. You know, and it comes from engagement and put. See, this is what I think it is: letting your guard down. Yeah. Okay, we can't have our like we've been taught to be guarded so much. And about so many things, especially the things yeah. we care about. But it's okay to let your guard down. It's okay to present yourself, I don't want to say defenseless, but non-combative when it comes to trying to understand where another person is getting their thought, their train of thinking, but where their perspective is coming from. You know, so it's it's both it takes both sides, you know, it takes yeah. both sides in any situation to want to see common ground you know what i mean it, it, it does it does and i don't have to get going so, right, cool. um, i'm gonna I'm 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 give a word to you i, I think that kind of wrapped up in it. and it, you know that topic came up because we all are all one which is yes, what you just said and and someone posted that you know people are being vicious to debbie and they are they're being yeah. very vicious and my thing is just this is that um if we if we aren't all one we all we all will go down yeah that's that's and, for sure enough and and we have to learn to disagree with people without being vicious we mm -hmm. can disagree and stay engaged mm -hmm. and that and that and that is my my two cents to everybody who i appreciate who are engaged they could be off in la la land they could be at the mall right now shopping they could be <laughs> you know supporting this nonsense yeah. yeah people who i disagree with are significantly more beneficial to fixing the problems in our world than the people who aren't even engaged at all damn that's real talk that's kind of real talk you know what i mean yeah so i'm gonna let you have the last word on care. that and i'm gonna have at to least they up. care a little bit you know yeah and i guess my last words is this we have to share compassion at an all-time high and that starts with like you said earlier looking at the person in the mirror we have to ask ourselves have we been compassionate enough we have to ask ourselves have we evaluated the events that are surrounding america but also the world in the way that we've looked at them through compassionate eyes you know not through nationalism or loyalty to an illusion, I guess you could say, because American loyalty is an illusion in it because we need to be loyal to people first. And we need to be compassionate to all individuals, all animals, all of nature. We need to be compassionate to everything in this existence that is natural. And once we find, I guess, the ability to do that in our minds, it starts to transfer into the actions that we carry out on a daily basis. You know, because when we change your thinking, you change your actions. And we can all think we have the right answers, but others are the keys. Like, I mean, we all are the keys to this puzzle, you know? So we can't alienate 
others in this fight. We have to find a way to stand together, use the common ground, disagree in truth, but also in love, you know, in love to where we're still engaged. Because yeah. what they want us to do is be disengaged about the social issues and the ills of this society in a way that we're distracted about everything they're putting on the big screen, you know, because they want us to focus on the big screen, big screen, big screen. We need to focus on each other. We need to focus on ourselves and more solutions come, more innovative solutions come because I don't want to say our backs are against the wall because they're really not. The backs are against the walls around the international community though, you know, and we have the ability to change the lifestyles of all those people. Right. It comes by us coming together in love and understanding that we're not going to agree on everything. But like Gerard said, we must stay engaged throughout this whole process. You know, that's the only way we evolve in our understanding and also evolve in the communication that we have in this hostile environment. That's what's up. Appreciate right. you, Jar. I appreciate everybody. I love y'all, man. Yeah. Y'all don't go out there being look, we got to have a week where we ain't too negative. You know, we ain't buying into the bullshit. Yeah. We got to have a week that is full of love, G. You know, we, yeah. we need a week of love or something. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we'll get there. We'll get no, there. But until the, until then, you just let a let, whittle in the love where you can, whittle yeah. in the humor where you can. Yeah. Just keep it going, stay engaged. Um, y'all have a great weekend. A beautiful week hanging out with you. Great, great conversation, brother. I talked to you, brother G. I appreciate it. Right. Don't go watching the damn royal wedding either. No, turn it <laughs> off. Turn it off. Uh, ain't no pop. No, no don't turn that damn <laughs> on that. <laughs> don't you dare. Let me catch you. There ain't no pop and no circumstance. We running, fighting, screaming, loving, and the royals ain't got nothing to do with none of that. All right. All right man, thank you, brother. All right. Bye bye. Oh, man. It's crazy.